On to the butts. Here we go. new intro music hello everyone eric watson here freelance writer player of games writer of words recorder of videos and a tabletop role-playing aficionado welcome to our weekly live streamed dungeons and dragons fifth edition online role-playing adventures i'm really nervous so i apologize if i speak even faster than usual oh i am joined as always by my wonderful friends and i would normally introduce you with your characters but i don't know who your characters are yet i mean i kind of do but we're going to meet them during the course of this session. So instead, I'm just going to introduce the players. Uh, Chris. Hello. My music only cut out just a second ago. Oh, man. So. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't hear any of that intro, but My hello. apologies. Hello. Hopefully nobody's music is still playing. Heather. Hi. Rochelle joining us in a bit. Raymond. Hello. And Reese. Hello. We stream our sessions live on YouTube every Friday evening. You can watch all of our D&D live series as well as reviews and Let's Plays on my YouTube channel. Read weekly session recaps at RogueWanson.com and watch my behind-the-scenes No Players Allowed live series Crafting Icewind Dale every Thursday. Starting next week, you can head on over to our live post-session discussion. Uh, but since this is a session zero, we don't need to do a post-session discussion on that one. But starting next week, you, we will. Uh, are you sure? I think so. Uh, if you watched our previous campaign, War of the Lost Plane, then it'll be uh, exactly like that format. You can follow me on Twitter at Rogue Watson and join our official Discord server with invite link in the description below. If you would like to support the channel, please check out patreon.com slash Rogue Watson. Shoutouts to new patrons this week, Sean, aka Cert2B, Nathan, and Aiden. For our campaign, we use Roll20.net. For video chat, we use Discord. For streaming, I use Open Broadcaster software with Streamlabs. Music is by Kevin McLeod, and our amazing original character art was done by Jimmy McClure. I would also normally take this moment to recap what happened previously on Icewind Dale Round Frostbane, but this is session zero. This is the beginning. So I got nothing, nothing to recap. Instead, we're going to recap next week either. Uh, very well. I can talk about how we made our characters. <laughs> <laughs> characters were created. Characters were created. You, and yeah. and, re <laughs> and scene. Uh, so for session zero, we're going to be building our characters, which folks bear with us because we just calculated before we started. It has been a hot minute since we had to actually make characters because our previous campaign, which uh, Chris DM'd War for the Lost Plane, we ended up playing higher level characters who already existed they already were established i think i was the only one that made a character so the last time we had to make characters was for tomb of annihilation which started in a, a, a lifetime ago 2018 i think <laughs> so it has been a hot minute uh but we're going to be making our characters this session we're going to go over our uh house rule updates and normally a session zero would include things like uh uh uh, campaign expectations and tone of the campaign what players want out of that what the dm is going to bring maybe like safety tools we're kind of gonna hand wave a lot of that away because again this is just for new people coming in uh i th these are all my childhood best friends forever and ever and we've been literally doing this D and D roll twenty online thing for like five years now so we kind of all <laughs> understand uh, where our comfort levels are, what we want out of these games, and everything else. So, but this is a PSA, so don't don't skip that if you're playing with generally other people. Uh, but here we're going to be focusing primarily on uh, building our characters, including rolling stats and everything. And yes, we have awesome character art to show. So I also have secrets to deal at, which is a new thing for this campaign. Um, we're going to be doing that in a second. But why don't we start by um, doing a little bit of introduction for each character, and then we're going to roll some stats, and then we'll do, uh, I think we'll do secrets after that. So, uh, Chris, I will give you the privilege 
of starting because you were the last one to lock in your character. You were our uh, flex position. All right. Well, I don't know how you want me to do this exactly. <clears throat> if I can show everybody. I, don't, I can't show everybody. I think I can. Um, yeah, give me a second. I might have to. You might be seeing me switching your screen around. But if I select. If I do show to play. Let's see. Does everybody see this pop up on their screen? Nope. No? Okay. I will edit it and just make it everybody journal then. Everybody journal. Okay, so everybody should now see Chris's character sheet <laughs> in the party. <laughs> and we can enjoy... Uh, let's see, can I blow this up? I can. We can magnify it ourselves. How do you do that? So I mean, oh, the there you go. Yep. Um, it might be a little bit of a low res here, but this is... Uh, well, Chris, I'm going to let you talk about it. It's your fucking character <laughs> as we stare at your character. Um, is, I got to do the voice, but the voice is still a work in progress. Are you using the voice mod, or is this just a voice no, inflection no, no, on your no, point? No. Okay. Just, this is just me doing an accent. Gotcha. Valraven Gwenetain Lanria, at your service. Eladrin Bard of Eloquence. That's all I've got so far. <laughs> <laughs> That's who I was I was settling in for a for a speech. There's no there's no speech. It's, okay. Uh, yeah. He is a Eladrin El which is a seasonal elf. Um, he has a spring Eladrin, which means he's a very joyful, uh, upbeat person. Um, and he is an eloquence bard, which means he is very good at speaking. Oh my <laughs> God. My character is going to hate you. He is an, <laughs> he is an, uh, uh, novelist by trade. And he wishes to travel around and collect stories of grand adventures and adventurers doing daring and adventurous deeds and write them down and become rich and famous off of his book of stories, <laughs> his novels of famous adventurers. Very nice. Um... Do you? I forgot to remind everybody about this, but something I did for Tomb of Annihilation is I had all the players give me five one-word adjectives to describe the, to describe their character. I did write them. Did down. you come with your I homework did, I did, done? I did do my homework. <laughs> Just as an easy way of a, a, a at a glance character descriptor. Yes, his five adjective words are enthusiastic. Oh Jesus! Distinctive. Passionate. Inquisitive. And cheerful. He's actually playing a nice, happy I'm, character. I'm, <laughs> this is so I'm, against I'm nice, your yeah. typecasting. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. He will be very happy to meet all of his fellow adventurers and go <laughs> on adventures with them. Very nice. Um, should we go ahead and roll uh, your attribute stats just so people can do that? Or do we want to move on? I, so I kind of want to. the character mancer, it doesn't go like that. It, you, it you, can, you can, like though. That. You, can, you can skip ahead. Yeah. Uh, if I were to. Because that way, I figure, I figure we'd, like to, we'd like to make the rolling of the attributes kind of a shared fun thing we can all look at, and then everything else can be done kind of, you know, while everybody else is doing things. Sure. Um, so, how are we doing this, by the way? We haven't, I, I, forget, I forget when the last time we did this was. I know, it's been a while. So, our rules, uh, and for those of you watching, um, is that we generate, uh, I think you do literally forward slash roll 4d6d1. Let's see if that works. And you can see what that does is it automatically, I did not roll very well, um, drops the lowest, it rolls 4d6s and drops the lowest one to give you an attribute. So you would do that six times and those are your attribute scores. Or And, and the caveat here, similar to the way we do hit points, is that if you roll so poorly that your total attributes add up to less than 72, then you can take the standard array of stats, which adds up to 72. I, I hope that doesn't happen, but which, yeah, we can certainly do that. I think is this? I'd have to actually... I think that's right. Remember about that. Yeah, that's that. right. I was just using that in 5e tools. That's right. Yeah. This character's got to get that charisma score way the hell up there. So <laughs> I got I nothing better, else. <laughs> I, if, you know what? If I get like, if I can get one high and everything else is a fucking 12, I'm, I'm happy. But I just need that one high. <laughs> I just got to get that high, man. All right. So I should just do that six times. 
Yeah, let's go ahead and do that okay. for you. All right, number one. Not bad at all. There you go. That's pretty good. Fourteen. That's also 14. not bad yeah. at all. Oh boy, hey. this is getting real good so far. Oh, okay. It'll be a jack of all there trades. There you go. One, two, three, four. Karma gonna come in? Okay, karma's <laughs> starting to come in. <laughs> <It's going down. laughs> starting to slow down there at the end. Uh, that's that's not bad. Okay. That's a really good spread, actually. I think so. Yeah. That feels 15. like it's it's just above Here's average. 75. 75. 75. Okay. I, I was hoping I'd get one like really high one, like yeah. a 16 or 17, but this this. Oh, so you can work. get that. Yeah, because right yeah. now, so using Tosh's rules, you can add a, a plus two to anything and a plus one to anything. Yep. Yeah. So plus two, like he could make a 17, then a 15? Mm -hmm. Correct. Mm, got you. Yep. Yep, which is almost certainly what I'm going to do. Yeah. All right, so Chris has made his stats. He can fuddle around with his character sheet. Let's move on to our next person, which is uh, Heather. All right. Well, I'm not as fun as Chris as of right now at this moment, namely because I haven't really figured out how her voice is going to sound yet. But I shall introduce you to Frey, the halfling barbarian. Lovely, wonderful dichotomies. Yes, switching to your character picture, everybody can see. <laughs> <laughs> and by the way, I have a really cool group shot that I'm going to put on the splash page. I have it hidden right now because I, I wanted this to be the reveal and not that to be the reveal, but I will put everybody's pictures on there. And I have wanted to play a halfling barbarian for the last three campaigns. <laughs> nice. And there was just no way to make it work until they came out with Tasha's because uh, all right. when we were going to do Tomb, I was going to do it for Tomb. And then he was like, well, you're going to have all of these negatives and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, well, screw that then. <laughs> that it does yeah. sound like me. Yeah. <laughs> it sounds exactly like you. Yeah, so Tasha's oh my God, is... The dog just farted too, by the way. <laughs> Open to the field with the character creation. We are taking full advantage yes. of that. So... But yes, her name is Frey. Uh, and you'll find out why later. I mean, if it doesn't already make sense already. All right. So this the roll. 4d6. Give us those one. All right. Come on. Good numbers. Like. What a Oh, that's not good. Oh, that's not a bad good. start. <laughs> <laughs> all right, it's all right. We'll get good. There we go. Immediately. Three. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Four. Five. Come on. Yeah. Oh, I wonder if that adds up. That's close. That's yeah. I, I'm wondering if that's going to be the the average or what's, above the average. Let's find out. 68. Really? Mm-hmm. So you could take the standard array if you wanted to. <sighs> I think I will. I think I'm going to take the standard. You're not really gaining anything by not right. The That's you're what I was looking at. Two, two it's not like you had a. Getting. It's not like you had a 17 or something in there that would make you pause. There's nothing really. Yeah. Yep, so similar to our hit point rules, basically I just don't ever want to screw somebody over. I always like having them roll, but I always want to be able to fall back on the average, so nobody can be below average at least for power curve. Yep. Alright, so I'll work on putting those in. Okay, um, we will delay Rochelle and go to Mr. Raymond. What we got, sir? I will admit that I'm not very creative, so a lot of my characters are modeled after somebody. Oh shit! You're very creative. <laughs> well, the character creations are always are usually modeled after somebody, so inspired by. Some, inspired, yes. <laughs> so, Loosely based on. <laughs> that's right. Uh, who knows? Some of y'all may uh may be able to guess where this is coming from, but my character, I've decided. I've just came up with the name here. Edmund Ulrich is a human alchemist artificer, or the other way around. Artificer uh, alchemist. I like that name. Well, it's not quite creative, but... <laughs> <laughs> Stop that! Stop that this instant! It's fantastic. Except Maybe later I'll tell you what the, the name I based it off of is. Anyway. <laughs> so, 
I really like the picture. The art looks really good. Yeah, so all of our – this is original character art uh, by Jimmy McClure. Um, I included a, a uh, link to his Instagram in the description below, but absolutely oh, nice. incredible work. Oh, my God. Jimmy's – like he's been amazing at this. Oh, my God. And sorry, did you say that we give a little backstory or we're just rolling? Um, whatever you want to give me right now, I understand mm. that um, – Oh, we've got to do the. Do you have the five descriptors for Heather's character also? Oh, yeah. um, but I was going to mention oh, yeah. uh, just real quick. Whatever little, if you have just a little character concept or nugget you want to give, that's fine. But these character secrets could very well dictate a lot of your story, so you don't have to have the whole thing ready. Oh, so my five adjectives yes. uh, were belligerent, <laughs> intense, wild, cocky, and ambitious. <laughs> there you go. But good. Robin's going to spend a good amount of time trying to get you on his side. I, I can already <laughs> tell. And a lot, and a lot of is gonna, he's going to be trying. He's going to be trying his best. Nice. That's great. Um, so my character um, is coming to this campaign to investigate a weird phenomenon that you'll hear about later. Um, to try to figure out if there's a, a way to undo some sort of a uh, terrible error mistake he's made in the past. Basically, he just needs to learn more. He needs to figure out secrets. And see Stay tuned, because I think I picked out some good secrets for you <laughs> that might you might be able to incorporate. <laughs> so basically, any like abnormal, weird phenomenon, it's like, all right, got to go check it out. Got to go learn more, figure out more. OK, nice. Um, I don't have five words yet because I didn't realize we had to make that. Well, yeah. That's but my bad. Way, I should I should have reminded. The way I got you four. It, I would assume curious to be one of them, or, or at inquisitive. least uh, inquisitive. Yeah. <laughs> well, I had to put some negatives in here too. But this one, he's also cocky. Mm, so that's a good we'll one. That goes with Heather. Confident, <laughs> um, smart, quick wit, and then I'll come up with some negative one. Okay. Yeah. All right, rolling. Yes, rolling. One. Two. Oh my goodness, guys. Three. There we go. Four. Five. Oh, oh my no. goodness. What Sorry. is up with these roll that, 20 rolls? That was great. Chris, Chris took when, all the good rolls. When That's Raymond rolled I remember when Raymond rolled for Tomb, he had like an incredible like it was like <laughs> it would add up to like eighty or something. It was insane. Yeah. Look at this three of them below ten. My goodness. Raymond, you're at a sixty six. I know. Even worse. Nothing we've seen. What was did Chris even get? No. He we haven't seen higher than a fifteen. That's no, wow. Wow. Hey, Reese hasn't rolled yet, and we all know well, Reese rolled. I know. Well. It's y'all are due for a, a good character here. Not that no, not that you guys aren't good characters. I'm sure you I'm <laughs> sure not, you'll do aside just... the garbage characters you've seen before. <laughs> now it's time to get real. <laughs> but yes, well, you I will go with the standard array. Yeah, you probably might as well take the standard array. All maybe right. We all do, maybe if we all do terrible, the DM will just roll again. <laughs> <laughs> just buff just the entire. Hey, again. remember, you guys are. I, give, I let you have the free feet at level uh, one, also, sure. and you're starting at level two. So I'm. I'm giving you a lot of little bumps here. True. All right, Reese, we've come to you. So it's come to this. So it has come <laughs> to this. All right, I will be playing Thimbleweed. A gnome, <laughs> horse gnome ranger. Nice. He is from the one of the nomadic tribes in the area. Uh, yeah, I still to give you that information. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so that art's great. The expression on your character is great. Right. So yeah, I don't know if you mentioned it, but obviously yeah. going swarm keeper was the plan. I think. <laughs> yeah. Well, yes. I changed my mind. <laughs> <laughs> So yes, when I turn level three, surprise! Landing <laughs> <laughs> of the oh, insects. I another level of rogue. That's right. That's right. <laughs> um, I I do have a voice, which I'll do next time. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Keep us in suspense <laughs> next time. Yeah. And I I do not have the five characteristics yet. Yep, I should have. I I meant to send out a reminder, but did not yeah. get that one up. Um, so yeah, he's, he, I, you know, he thinks he's bigger than he is, I'll say. Excellent. I'm sure there's a word for that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm sure. 
Yes. Uh, be sure to enter your name into the top thing, too, because obviously I just had placeholders of your actual player names in there rather than the character names. And then show me some stats. Surely you can't suck it up like the others. <laughs> it's a worse off. Good start. Good start. Oh, God. Our lowest, oh. our single lowest oh. stat yet. Hey, our single highest, highest stat highest. yet. That is the highest you've seen. He's yeah. going to be a... Oh, oh, my God. Touchdown. 18. God damn. <laughs> God, super min-maxed character. Wait, wait, hold on. You're rolling four, just 46. Oh, you are rolling four. <laughs> oh, wow. What is it supposed to be? You got you to gotta right. drop the you lowest won. number. You're right. What's funny that is I didn't even notice five. that. That makes that six even worse. That was supposed to be oh. a five. <laughs> it should have been a five. Yeah. Yeah, 46 D1, so it drops the lowest. Okay. So the first one would be 12. 12. 12. Yep. Five, 5. 14. 14. 14. Or 15. 15. And then uh, 10. 10. Okay. So this is actually, okay. <laughs> Coming down off the high. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It was really... <laughs> Got one more? I think it should be one more. Yeah, one, two, more. three, four, it, five. Four, four D6 four D1. 46 D1? 46 D1, yep. Like drop one. Okay. There we go. I think you still ended up being... 69. Nice. Really? Close. <laughs> <laughs> All of these below average. Guys! Are we sure this is the same formula we used before? What is it does, it does seem like everything's coming in pretty low. Man, rough. Yeah. Real fucking rough. I'm not sure this is the right rolls we're supposed to be doing here. <laughs> these, yeah, you guys would have thrown these dice out a long time ago and gotten another set of dice. All right, someone go back and watch episode one of Tomb. Make, make sure we're using the right formula for this. <laughs> yeah. I rolled real good in Tomb. Well, All right, chat. Hopefully, hopefully when Rochelle pops in, then... Uh, she will be able to finally fix our awful rules. Right. But that's why the standard array exists, because you can take yep. the averages. If you take that five, that's a minus three. <laughs> <laughs> that, is a, that is a dumpy a dump stat is, right there. Yeah. Not if I add my plus two to it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what are you really god-awful at? Intelligence. <laughs> I can barely speak. <laughs> what, do, like, what do beasts have? Like a three? <laughs> I did, right. That's how I know how to talk to them so well. Yeah. <laughs> you are one with them. Uh, okay, so do we do secrets now? I don't know, do um, we? I guess. Do you want to do secrets before we do like I don't know what what else there is to do? Um, Backgrounds. Uh, basically, just it's all part of you guys. Uh, just enter it in there. Yeah, making your characters and asking any questions that you have, discussing your abilities. Um, the only thing we need to do as a as a pure group, basically, we need to do the secrets and then go over the house rules. Everything else is just kind of everybody individually like working through their sheets. And and by the way, for everybody that doesn't know this, we're starting at level two. So not only do you have to make your characters, you then have to level them up to two after you've yep. built the character. And I don't know if you can use a character monster or not, but that's a kind of a second step, I think. If you are using the character monster, do not automatically go to level two because it will foobar everything. Mm -hmm. I tried that with oh, when no. we were doing Chris's campaign. Uh, do, it, do it one first. One, and then do one at a time, build the sheet, yeah, and then do level up. Level individually. Okay. Otherwise, it will completely miscalculate your hit points and all of that. Good to know. <laughs> Someone in the chat wrote, you could only speak to squirrels. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see how I know the language of the squirrels. Well, now that we've got our characters, I can reveal our character group art on this page. So now you should see Characters on the main page, and that is me as the DM. Nice. <laughs> With nice. my magical DM powers, lording over all of you. That's great. 
Oh my god, is that Rochelle's character on the scene yes. there? Yes. I, <gasps> oh, yes, so awesome. <laughs> she is not here to introduce her character, but um, she is... Uh, I, I, well, I assume we'll learn what, what she's holding. Reese, do you want to give a brief <laughs> synopsis of this character? Uh, I'll, I'll let her. Okay. Yeah. We'll add it to the thing, but she's a half orc monk wielding, wielding a mop. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I liked her name thing though. That was really clever. She was texting me about that. Oh really? Yeah, it was, it was a cool idea. That's great. That's that's a great team shot there. I know. <laughs> I have an actual landing page, um, that we're gonna be using for the future. But story wise, I think it makes sense if we obviously don't introduce it for session zero, and maybe not even for session one. We'll actually see. <laughs> on uh when we'll get that but we won't be using this as our standard uh landing page i've actually got a better page set up but we're not going to be revealing that quite yet if you've been watching my crafting streams then you have seen the landing page <laughs> uh but you players not seen that quite yet um let's see well i can give you a, I, I can kind of repeat what i said in the player prep document that i gave my players to help uh them decide on what uh you know, kind of players they want to play and what campaign we're looking at. Uh, I wrote down Icewind Dale, Rime of the Frostbane, takes place entirely within the region of Icewind Dale and Arctic Tundra region far to the north of the Sword Coast. And I remembered, I reminded everybody that we were there once before during our Storm King's Thunder campaign. For those of you that have been watching us for years, uh, we defended the town of Bryn Shander from Frost Giant attacks. That was the campaign, the first campaign Chris DM'd. It's a harsh, harsh region inhabited mostly by tribal nomads, dwarven miners, mountain goliaths, and a loose coalition of settled frontier towns and villages called Ten Towns, the biggest of which is home to only a little over a thousand people. Denizens are mostly human, but include all the diverse races of Faerun. The region has currently experienced a catastrophic anomaly. The sun hasn't shone in months. The entire region has been blanketed in nightfall, lit only by the moon and the northern lights. Normally, Icewind Dale sees little sun during the winter months, but now the lack of sunlight throughout each season is threatened is threatening to upend the delicate ecosystem. No one is sure why, but many are blaming the goddess of winter, Oral, known locally as the Frost Maiden. I mentioned that everybody's going to be starting off traveling to Icewind Dale. Those of you that are from Icewind Dale have uh, left to go pursue whatever your adventuring career was. And because we're starting this campaign at level two, so you've all either returned to Icewind Dale or you're journeying there for the first time uh, because of this kind of natural, does that not, you don't know what, natural about it, but it, disaster befalling uh, this region. And then I mentioned what uh, factions play a major role in the campaign and which factions play a minor role in the campaign as a way to give players kind of hints and tips towards uh, different storylines they might be wanting to craft characters of, especially players like Chris who makes five different characters and then has <laughs> cool ideas for all of those characters and this helps him, five, you probably made a dozen, but helps you narrow down that focus a little bit and decide which ones. It's a filtering process. Yes. Might be a little more uh, relevant or fit into the quest a little better. That being said, obviously we can make anything work. And I always cite uh, Chris's character, Mannix, as being a Noir detective in the jungles of Chult, as the fact that we can make literally any character concept work. <laughs> mm -hmm. They may not like it, but it'll work. Exactly. How's the character creation going? Does anybody have any questions about the character monster? And by the way, the other new thing for, for... I have Ghost of Salt Marsh in here. Um, I should. What are you trying to get from there? Uh, background. Oh. I should have it on there. Reviewed it. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was going to say the one new thing for this campaign the new house rule uh, we've got a bunch of new house rules but the new character creation rule is that everybody will get to start level one with a feat not just variant human which kind of uh disqualifies variant human as a choice but that way everybody can better specialize your character and have a cool unique feature in addition to this player secret i'm fixing to give you um just a kind of a fun way to define your character so does anybody have any ideas of what their first feat is going to be. I just changed because I didn't get a high enough score. Oh, <laughs> yours not, changed? Yeah, because I didn't get a high enough score to not, uh, uh, what do you call it? Um, take one that gives you a plus one. 
I need that plus one. Oh, okay. Oh, I see. Yeah, do you want the feat that gives you a plus one plus something yes. else? Yeah, yes, that makes exactly. sense. A lot of you, I could see probably taking those because we rolled right. so terribly. Well, if, if 15 is <laughs> your highest, plus two is 17. You only need one more to get to 18. That's true. That's a plus. That's your that's your big uh, your big number. So now you're looking at all the plus one charismas. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And there's one that background wise, I think makes sense for my character. That's probably Faye touched because hmm. background wise, he probably came from some sort of Faye elven court. He's like he's like <clears> 550 <throat> years old, by the way. <laughs> okay. <laughs> he's a he's and yet a only level two. <laughs> yes. I was wondering a, a weird disconnect. He's a middle-aged guy in elven terms, and elves live to be like 750 or some, <laughs> some odd. Wow. So, Chris, uh, let me ask you. Yeah. So, you all know I'm big and listened into all the acquisitions incorporated from the very beginning all the way till recent. Yeah. And when Will Wheaton was playing, he played a character similar in style to yours a little bit. Really? Except for he pronounced it Aladrin. Oh, I don't know. I so, really have I, no idea. Yeah. <laughs> El Eladrin is how I've been pronouncing it in my head, but if it's okay. Eladrin, I, I have no idea. That's why I was sure. asking. I was like, do we know which pronunciation is right? No. I, I, well, I, 5e Tools has that. Uh, uh, oh, you can actually click on the thing and listen to it. <laughs> Although I, I wonder if it's actually in here. Like, if, like, this is another case of Chris's. How do you say Paladin? Paladin, I think. Paladin. Yeah. Paladin. <laughs> What's funny is you're not using the Aladdin uh, pronunciation for this character, for this uh, word. Somebody in the oh, chat, right. I'm sure, will. When you, when you click the five E tools, uh, uh, speaker thing, it says elf. <laughs> <laughs> no! That's helpful. thanks. Yeah, <laughs> elf. See, if anyone doesn't believe me, here's my C team logo. Very there nice. you go. There you go. Got my blanket. Man, somebody who loves you must have given you that blanket. I know. The UPS man does. No, <laughs> damn it. I get no respect. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Raymond or Heather, what about your feats? Are you still thinking about the feats that you were thinking of, or does your roles change your plans? I'm still gonna take mine. Yours had a plus, right? Yeah. Yep. So uh, I'm gonna take a feat called Squat Nimbleness. Sounds about right. <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm very short. Yeah. Uh, so I get a plus one in either strength or dex. Uh, which I'm probably gonna put it in Dex. Yeah, I think I will. Um, I don't know. It's it's hard because odd I'm not gonna be wearing armor to get a bigger AC boost. Um, because of the I get unarmored defense at level one, so it's ten plus con plus Dex. So I if I up Dex. It kind of makes con and dex have the same plus, so yeah. I'm trying to figure out. I mean, it, but the whole the barbarian thing is like you you just your meat shield to some degree. So like they, they, the <laughs> yeah, AC is yeah. not yeah, and it also gives me an extra five speed for my five walking speed, oh, which is nice. great because I was at twenty five and now I'm at thirty, so I can keep up with all of you tall people. Nice. All right, because yeah. the small ones have uh, slightly yeah. slower, yeah. <laughs> slower gait. <laughs> uh, I'll be proficient in acrobatics, and then I'll have advantage on any kind of strength or dex check to escape being grappled. If I'm ever grappled, nice. that, that, sound, that sounds very good for your character. That sounds very yeah. acrobatic. Yeah. yeah. What is it called? Squat nimbleness. Squat nimbleness. Okay. <laughs> Makes sense. Uh, Raymond, what wow. about you? So I am choosing the telekinetic, which I'm not going to use it exactly as is, but it increases intelligence, wisdom, charisma by one. So I didn't realize I could do that, but that's nice. Uh, you learn the mage hand can trip, um, and you can make it invisible, but I'm going to spin it so it's not really actually mage hand, um, but we'll see when I use it. And a bonus mm -hmm. action, you can try to telekinetically shove one creature. Again, not telekinetically, but however my character does things. Yeah. But it will give me ability to kind of try to shove a creature uh, as an end result. Nice. And they have to succeed on a straight saving throw. This is a new feat from Tasha's telekinetic. Mm. So. 
Yeah, and I'm all for reflavoring stuff. That includes whatever whatever you're doing, whether it's spells or attacks or something. And you know, it's it, system is very modular, where you can easily replace like one weapon with another, for example, and just use the same you know mechanics for it to reflavor it where it makes it you know does what that character should be doing. Right. And in fact, Chris, you mentioned that you're not uh, musically yep. inclined well, as a well, bard. Is not musically inclined. Yeah. At all. So all the um, stuff he probably, is... he pro- he would probably be have like have a knowledge of how to play instruments just from his time in a court, but uh, he doesn't do it himself. He's not a musician, so everything he does is based on the like reading aloud of stories. That is how he does magic. That is how he uh, does his song of rest. Yeah, his song of rest is gonna end up annoying the hell out of you guys. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna equate to every short rest. He's just gonna tell you guys the recap of story. <laughs> just do the recap of what happened, like the last right. session. Yep. <laughs> My character will kill you, uh, probably eventually, and and he won't. He will have very few defenses if she ch- chooses so, to do that. Did, did you decide which uh, feet you were taking, or were you still looking at them for your uh, your charisma feet that you wanted? I'm pretty sure it's gonna be uh, Fey touched. Fey touched. Okay. Yep. He, because uh, background wise, he's likely going to have come from a, because the Eldrin, how's it pronounced, Heather? I'm trusting you at this point. I don't know. Will Wheaton was Will Wheaton and uh, Chris Perkins pronounced it Aladrin. 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 Well, if Chris Perkins pronounces it Aladrin, I'll, I'll roll with it. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just uh, I, I saw just what they told me. Yeah. Um, Eladrin are already like fey elves. They're already like elves from the fey realm or whatever. Okay. So he. Yeah, he probably has some of that Fey realm in him. Oh shit, you get Misty Step. That's pretty solid. Yes, which means he gets two free Misty Steps per short rest. Oh no, I'm sorry. I think the the, the feat's only long rest. Yeah, but his race gives him a short rest Misty Step. Oh wow. Yeah, I can decide on what that first other first level spell is going to be. Oh yeah, one of the first. Hey, that's a good one. These feats are too good. Why did I let you guys have feats for <laughs> Uh Reese, do you know what feat you're thinking of taking for your free level one feat for this campaign? Uh, I will be... Uh, getting Piercer. So it increases my strength or dex by one. God, you guys and need all of those. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. When I hit a creature with an attack that does piercing, I can reroll one of the attack's damage dice and use the new roll. And when I score a critical hit that deals piercing, I can roll one additional damage die when terming extra piercing damage. Wow, okay. So, extra damage. Yeah. That's right, Heather was showing me the slasher one, so I guess this is the piercing damage version. (laughs) I almost took slasher. Yeah. This one seems like it's got slightly different abilities, though. Dealing um, another damage die. Mm-hmm. And being able to re-roll your attack damage is real nice. So are you are you gonna be the archer? Is that the plan? Uh yeah, I'll be sending my swarm out to attack. Hi. My swarm <laughs> will do an extra one D six piercing damage for my attack. So Yeah, and we're gonna be seeing a lot of new uh, classes and subclasses, it sounds like. Yeah, and I uh, plan on doing using all the new ranger right. uh, abilities for that appeared in Tasha's. Yeah, those seemed a lot better because the baseline ranger stuff was a bunch of features that our campaign never used. <laughs> I was like, you can find your way around the land and don't worry about <laughs> right. rations and all that. Like, we don't really <laughs> worry about Which that way anyway. Is north? Yeah. Who the fuck cares? Right. <laughs> And then the Unearthed Arcana one that we that I used and Raymond used is just a little too crazy with like I can radar sense everything in a ten mile radius and oh, right. that one gets yeah. kinda crazy. So this that new ranger does seem like it's a good uh decent balance there. Yeah, I'm pretty excited about it. <laughs> All right. Um I think I've stalled as long as I can. Do we do secrets? Do you know what her status is? I don't think she'll be making it tonight. Okay. <laughs> so <laughs> do it off stream. Baby is not allowing it. <laughs> uh well, sure. Can we introduce a little can you introduce a little bit of her character just for that till we get some information about her? Um 
yeah, uh, the part I know is uh, she's half orc, and she was a janitor at a monastery, and that uh, is her trusty mop. <laughs> and um, she learn the ways of her order's martial um, fighting style. So that's about all I know. Okay. Uh, that sounded like a really fun idea for a character. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. Do okay. Do we just let her make her character a different time then, or do we? I don't want to like roll her stats for anything. That's a big deal. Um. Yeah, I just save it for maybe off stream at some point. Uh, I think that'd be sure. Okay. Yeah, we can figure it out. All right, uh, then I will go ahead and do the secrets part. So hopefully you guys are still working through your uh, characters. And so as we decided uh, last time, the, the, the player secrets are a part of the campaign. And it's a neat idea to where it probably could be for every campaign, which is to help either this could be your entire character arc and story or it could be just a footnote or you could integrate it whatever you feel like and the ones in the book there are a bunch of them and some of them are next to meaningless and others are like a super big deal so what i did is i took my favorite ones modified them and added some more to where i ended up with 10 solid secrets and i added game mechanics to those secrets similar to how if you play an rpg and you can select like an optional trait at the beginning that has like a positive and a negative that's how i built all of these secrets because not only did I want them to be a cool part of your character, but I wanted you to actually be able to like use this. And, and it's something that a lot of these in the case, they might give you a cool ability, but it's like, do I want to actually like, how do I reveal this or keep it hidden from the rest of the party kind of a deal. So the idea is this is something this is a secret that only your character knows and the rest of the party doesn't, but it's entirely up to you on if you want to like tell people immediately or if you want to keep it secret for as long as possible or however that rolls out that is I'm it's up to you I right now am going to be dealing two secrets to each of you and these are ones that I have pre-selected that I think would work well for your player character you have to pick one of them but you should have a lot of wiggle room with both of them and a lot of fill in the blanks vagaries that's what I try to add to it is, is the ability for you to modify them after the initial kind of shock of them and let you look at them, I will then take you one at a time and um, you are going to need to mute me and the player and then I will mute the rest of you as we kind of go through and uh, y that, that player that I've got, tell me which secret you want and then ask me any kind of follow-up questions that you have and then obviously if we have anything further from there, you can whisper me via uh, Roll20 or you know, talk to me after the stream or something, but it's going to be tricky because we don't want to share this information with everybody else, but I still want to make it part of the stream. So I figure that's the best way uh, to handle this process. Yeah. So if we haven't used the card system yet, hopefully you can figure it out, but they will appear as little cards on your um, avatars. You guys might actually hide your avatars. I don't know. But like when you see the names at the bottom on roll 20, there's usually a picture there. Um, I don't know how it works if you hide them, but the card should appear in the kind of upper left corner of your picture, and then you should be able to click those and then enlarge them. Now, when you actually pick one, I will then give the one that you pick as a proper handout that only you see. But for the purposes of this, it's just easier to do it via the cards. The cards, the cards, the cards. And yes, please, uh, no spoilers. And obviously, if you watch the crafting stream, please don't repeat any of the spoilers I say. Uh, <laughs> I, am, I am in the chat. In so the craft, know. yeah. And players players are in the chat, so that can be true. If you want to talk, honestly, if you want to discuss spoilers, the best place to do it is, is the Discord server, the Rogue Watson Discord server, and use that No Players Allowed channel. My players do not have access to that channel. They don't even know it exists, except I talk about it all the time. Um, <laughs> I know it exists. You, yeah. <laughs> um... <laughs> But uh, please use that specific channel to uh, discuss any spoilers during the stream or after the stream. That's what it's there for. All right. So let's give this one. Oh, don't lag on me now. To you. And this one is going to be for Shell. So we'll save that. This one. I assume I shouldn't click on the one above Heather. I see a one, I see no, a one above Heather. No, I don't think you but can, but don't click on it anyway. Can I click on it? Uh, you can click on yours, yes. 
one. You. You. This one is for you. Okay. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> that one is not. This one is for you. And this one is Cut. for you. Okay, so everybody's got two secrets. Shit. Okay. God damn it. <laughs> I, I can't do this one. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I'll give you a second to look over them, and then I will start taking you into the principal's office one by one. Ah. <laughs> I like my wife's expression right now. <laughs> really? I, I, uh, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't want to say too much, but I like one, but I literally cannot do it. Oh, I'll no. <laughs> okay. I, I, I chose I chose second. poorly then, but maybe you've no, got... no, you didn't, you didn't. Just just the way I yeah, we'll talk about. Okay, it. Whenever, okay. We're, whenever we're alone. Whenever we're alone. Uh, I am disappointed that uh, Rochelle's not here to see those because I think she has some of the ones <laughs> I am most proud of. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> yeah, it's too bad. Yeah. Um. All right. So now that you guys have gotten a chance to look at them. Why don't we go in reverse order of what we did for character creation. So we're going to start with uh, Reese. So what's going to happen is right now, I need all of you to mute. Well, first, so whenever me and Reese are done, we're going to type in the Roll20 window and say, okay, we're done or whatever. Um, I need the three of you to mute me and Reese in Discord. And then I will mute the three of you and we'll get back to it. So right click. And presumably Reese will have to mute all the three of us too. Uh, yes, us, also, but, yeah, I mean, Reese, you'll also have to do that. Right click and mute. I mean, you can hear them if you want, it doesn't matter. As long as they can't hear uh, us. Yes. All right, muting you two. All right, muting. All right. All right. Everything working out? Seems like they can't hear us. All right. So, Mr. Reese. <laughs> Raymond's making a fun joke. Excellent. Um, so, let's see. Which ones did you get? You got the favored and the host. Which What, what do you think? <laughs> What's your knee-jerk reaction to getting these? I uh, haven't uh, looked at them quite yet. I See, I get the uh, favorite gives me the... Uh, Resistance to cold damage, but mm -hmm. vulnerability to fire, which is pretty cool. Mm -hmm. uh, I like that. Um, uh oh, is Rochelle coming in? I need to oh, give her the maybe. instructions. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm tickled that she can join for this part, but yeah, we need to do the uh, make sure she can hear. Yeah, def I mean the mechanics are a big part of it, but also I'll be obviously take a good look at the story stuff too, because that could okay. certainly come into play. But uh, so part of what I wanted to do was I wanted to add mechanics to all these things so that you can be like, yeah. oh, cool. So if I got this, then I get this ability. Yeah. With some uh, negatives. Now, the favored definitely has the negative uh, built into both of them. So you get the resistance to cold damage, but the uh, fire damage, not only are you vulnerable, but as you uh -huh. can see, you literally have a fire phobia. So you have to roll a save. If you oh, take wow. fire damage, or if you start near fire, you have to roll a save or become frightened. That's cool. And if you actually engage your um, Oral's Embrace ability, a spectral snowflake appears above you, which you can try to hide, but I figure that was an oh. interesting thing where it's like, yeah, yeah. some people may recognize that, or you may have to play it off. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, that'd be uh, that's, that's really neat. Um, and uh, the other one uh, seems, I just read that, that seems wild. Fix our webcams real quick, I just realized. Let's see. Yes, so the other one, <laughs> the other one is pretty wild, <laughs> admittedly. Um, yeah. That one, notice how I do not have a uh, negative built in because literally what's going on there is basically the negative. 
Yeah. Um, that man, that's gonna be that's gonna be a while back later in the in the <laughs> campaign. I so think. You, yeah, it basically it just gives me free reign to um, explode you with a with a creature. <laughs> okay, cool. <laughs> and Very I figure cool. if you wanted to, we could even flavor that creature in different ways. The moment uh-huh. is you're not gonna know the moment. I may not know the moment. Yeah. Um, my goal is not to obviously like just kill your character outright, like straight up chest burster, but it would definitely uh-huh. be extremely debilitating for you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. That's just exciting. Uh, I like that idea. And I figure that might yeah. have some interesting flavor with you being a swarm keeper. Yeah. That'd be neat. And unfortunately you have to choose one of those secrets. Oh, oh, gotcha. Okay. Let's do the host. I think that's going to be the the oh, most stressful. So <laughs> the less stressful one could be. Could be. No, I said the most stressful. Oh, the most stressful. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I I am very excited about that. You you give me a very fun tool to work with, and I yes. appreciate that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Let me. I I think Rochelle is trying to get on and okay. Just, you know, Got to help her. Yeah. So I'm going to go ahead and add this to your uh, journal so you can see this, okay. but nobody else can see it. Okay. So I'll uh, help her out and let her know what's happening. Okay. See get her on. Did I get her jump on? Yeah. Awesome. That's really exciting. Yeah. That's awesome. Yay. Yeah. 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 <laughs> cool. All, right, All right. I'll get back on the videos. So angry. All right. Oh, we're supposed to unmute now. Oh, okay. okay. Yep. Yeah. Unmute. Can you hear me? <laughs> what do you want? We're voice. having a good conversation. Yeah, no, we, we were we were fine without you. Yeah. Eric. yeah. I just yeah. I just came out of the principal's office and saw you jackass around. I'm like, I just start pointing. <laughs> Reese comes out all sullen and shocked. Why does <laughs> why does a sheet? <laughs> we watched him just get up and walk off. So I mean, <laughs> he, he burned much. every one of you, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> Do you turning, guess what we said to me about he's you? He's turning state's evidence real quick. Uh, okay, so continuing going in the reverse direction, we've got Raymond next. So, everybody needs to mute me and Raymond, and Raymond needs to mute everybody else. To keep an eye on Reese, because he's going to come back and... All right. mm-hmm. yeah. I've muted yeah. them. True. Yeah, I'll have to make sure Reese is meeting. All right, Mr. Edmund. So, what? Uh, so, can the players see, or can the uh, viewers see the uh, secrets, or do I have to share it? Um, the, yeah, I, I'm showing handouts to the viewers, so don't worry about that. I've got that oh, under okay. control. So, I'm curious why you picked the first. Like, did you have one you picked more for my character? I'm curious if you have one that you think I'd pick. Um,. You know, after I thought about it, I was like, boy, they both kind of seem like they could be the same thing. You could flavor them as the same thing. It seems like your character would have some dark connections. Mm -hmm. So I feel like you could actually flavor either of these secrets for that dark connection. Either, and and keep in mind, you could be, the cult could mean different things. It could mean maybe you're just involved in some illicit activity. And then the hunted could also mean you were involved in illicit activity and you're just being hunted down for it. So sure, I sure. figured both of those would kind of fit and just kind of depends on how you want to really flavor um, how you see it. And, and more importantly, maybe which um, abilities that you want to go with, too. Yeah, I think that made it a little easier. I mean, when I was reading the cult, I was like, well, that doesn't really fit my character too much. Like, I know what you said, like, cult could mean anything. Like, he joined a group and I, mean, I guess technically he did join something to, you know, get their advantages or whatever Mm -hmm. but then i'm looking here at this charisma saving throw and did not put much into charisma oh gotcha all my characters um but like you said they're very similar and so i do like the hunted where you know i I might have done something in the past on accident Mm -hmm. accident. Um, and i'm sure you could have a good spin in that on your end where some sort of background character comes up all of a sudden 
Yeah, and, and keep in mind, if you notice, the hunted does not have a built-in negative like the cultist does. Uh, because the negative is the fact that you are being actively hunted by assassins and agents. So you are essentially, excuse me, giving the DM the tools with which to harass you. <laughs> uh -huh. I guess I also don't know what Arms of Hadar is. So let me look uh, it it, Yeah, it is a spell. You have to look it up. Tendrils of dark energy erupt from you and batter all creatures within 10 feet of you. Uh, I think <laughs> I'm okay. I think the charisma thing really made it bad because um, I'm sure I'll fail multiple times. Uh, <laughs> is that a bit of a dump stat for you? I didn't even look at your... And keep in mind, I didn't know anything about your roles or right, anything about right. your characters before or your uh, attributes. That's what I was wondering, like, like from what I told you in the past, uh, if which one you chose based on them. But yeah. I can see the similarities between them. But um, I did try to include which one you can use as your spellcasting modifier to give different character types a choice so you can choose to use charisma, wisdom, or intelligence. But yeah, Christmas saving throw just because it was like a willpower type thing, which you're right. I, yeah. yeah, with you being a dumb stat, that would be pretty rough. <laughs> it would, it would. So um, I will say my guy's not, he's going to be a melee guy, but he's not going to be the very tough based on my stats. So cunning actually will probably be very useful to disengage. True. Uh, yeah. But I do like, I do like that one just for my story. Just people are out to get me because of something I've done. Yeah, so. and I left it open so you can decide what you did. You can decide what kind of people are after you. You know, let me know all the information, and we can bake that into your to your story if we want. Um, yeah. And yeah. I am I am pleased to be given those tools to <laughs> have mm. people come after you. <laughs> but based on my inspiration, this one also makes more sense. Okay, so the hunted it is. All right, excellent. I'm glad one of them worked out. That was the goal. How to? Well, I guess the other guys won't know when I start using cunning action. I wonder if they'll question it or anything. This is the this is the thing. It's up to you guys how you want to flavor your secrets or how you want to try to hide them or explain it or whatever you want. All you know is that you all have extra, you know, abilities with your secrets, and uh, it's up it's up to you. I'm I'm leaving all that up to you guys. Some of them are, are a lot harder to hide than others. True. Well, I mean, plus they don't know artificer. So maybe oh, yeah. an artificer. Hey, <laughs> That's your knows. advantage. Yeah, right. We've not seen an artificer yet. Yep. All right. All so right. Edmund is the hunted. All right. So I've added that as a uh, a handout that you can see under secrets that only you can see. Okay. All right. So let me bring everybody back into the fold. We're back again. Oh man. We're back. Oh, Hello. Yeah. We're back. All Another right. one has chosen, chosen, chosen. Apparently the chat thinks Chris is very loud even when he's silent. Glanced over and saw that. No, the chat, I'm like, all right, fine. <laughs> he looks loud. He looks loud. <laughs> he, looks loud. <laughs> he looks so loud. You're not wrong, <laughs> chat. All right. Next we have Heather is coming into the principal's office to discuss her secrets. So now uh, the rest of you need to mute me and Heather, please. That has been my buddy in the, in the, in the <laughs> taking her away. She's gonna turn on you by the uh, end of this. Now. All right, mute, I'm muting. All right, dear. You asshole! <laughs> I have been waiting. Oh my god! Are you freaking kidding me? Yes. So you were given. Ah. Uh, <laughs> You were given the cannibal and the returned. Mm-hmm. What are your initial reactions and thoughts? <laughs> well, I already gave you my initial reaction. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> oh, my God. Ugh. The cannibal would be interesting. I'm not going to lie. That could be real. Because, again, you know, the whole... It's it's a wildling feel for, for this character. So, surprise, chat. Um... Characters kind of modeled after the Game of Thrones wildlings from the north. Uh, if you get, if you look at the the drawing, it's it's very much that kind of a feel with the the leathers and the all of that. Yeah. So, I mean, cannibal would be interesting, but <laughs> I just I. Hmm. That's a that's a tough one to hide. I mm. admit, <laughs> it would be a whole yeah. thing. Yeah, so... Uh, yours, yours had the most, like, fine print, I feel like. 
Yeah. And I had to, is, I deleted a bunch wrong. of fine print off there because I wanted to keep the actual uh, thing at the end that you weren't quite sure what that means. Mm -mm. Do you have any ideas of what that means? Under the cannibal one? Yeah, the very last sentence. See, so if you roll a one on wealth that die, you are overtaken by the curse of the Wendigo. Oh, dear lord. That means I become a Wendigo. <laughs> I become I become something that oh and you know I would roll a one too. That's the thing. I would instantly roll a one like the first time it happened. Oh my gosh. It would just it would just there's be no, bad. There's no keeping it a secret at that point either. No, not the slightest. Oh, then then the party has to determine do we put her down or do we let her live? Like so I'm I'm purposely keeping the mechanics of it vague, but you're probably circling around the ideas there. Yeah, yeah, I'm pretty sure I've I've got the right <laughs> idea about something like that. <sighs> so the, uh, for those of you that are trying to squint and read this, uh, Cannibal see, says you can basically feast on corpses. Uh, there's certain rules there: 15 minutes, no longer dead than an hour. Uh, in order to regain hit points, as if you were rolling uh, hit dice for a short rest. I think it's uh, half, but you don't actually consume the hit dice. Uh, you can feed on non-humanoid corpses, but you have to make a con save or gain the poison condition for an hour. And after each time you feed, you gain a well-fed die, which is basically like having a bardic inspiration, a d6. Um, and you can store a number of them equal to your proficiency bonus, but if you ever roll a 1 on that well-fed die whenever you use it, you are overtaken by the curse of the Wendigo. And I did not say what exactly that means, only that you feel it is a dark energy within you. <laughs> Or, uh, or ah. there's the returned. It's either like Hannibal Lecter or Lost. This is what I'm going with here. <laughs> yeah, which means you've been uh, resurrected. Um, why, how, by whom are all things that you can answer. Um, but you have come back to life and you gain uh, um, the ability to resist death, basically, with the Relentless Endurance trait. When you're reduced to zero hit points but not killed outright, you can drop to one hit point instead once per long rest. However, uh, there's something a bit off about you, and you have disadvantage on persuasion and deception checks and animal handling checks. Animals uh, do not. It kind of reminds me of we just watched that uh, Ted Bundy movie where the he's like down in the animal shelter and the dog's like all nice and just starts like flipping out and barking at him and shit. When he starts staring at the yeah, dog, he just yeah, starts, the dog just starts sensing like the evil within him or something. So I have. Disadvantage on persuasion and what checks? Uh, persuasion, deception, and animal handling checks. Mm. Chat desperately wants you to go left, obviously. <laughs> but you don't have to listen to the chat. Oh. But I figured both of these would fit <laughs> with so your... Like vote left or right. Vote what left. The <laughs> <laughs> They're trying to get the votes. Um, I figure both of these could potentially fit your, your wildling character, though. Yeah, they could. Oh, man. <laughs> You've been the most agonizing decision so far. The others were picking pretty quick. Well, they probably didn't have to choose between being freaking Hannibal Lecter <laughs> or going on the show Lost. <laughs> you know what? Screw it. This I am all about just doing whatever I want with this character and having fun however I want to do it. I'm going the fucking cannibal. Yeah, you are. <laughs> <laughs> she votes left. Do it. She voted left. <sighs> All right, it's gonna be up to you to keep this a secret. Good luck with that, uh, uh, or not, or not. You can just eat people around them if you want to, and they can deal with it. I, I mean, you and I might have to have a, a chat after everything is done to let's fully define what is and is not, so that way yes. I have an understanding of yes, this, so will. that way we can put some parameters on it without everyone else hearing it for sure. But, um, yeah. Oh, my God. The chat's very happy. You're welcome, chat. You're welcome. <laughs> We're going to see how long I can keep this a secret and how fast I roll the one. Indeed. That'll be great. Uh, all right. So this has been added as your player secret. Uh, oh, dear, you should see it as a handout that only you can see. Yeah, I can see it. <laughs> oh, God. All right. Let's bring everybody back in. Oh. Man. All right, unmuting. I should not be clicking that. All right, we're back. Can you hear me? Yep. 
Oh my god, that was awful. Chris, <laughs> I ratted your ass out so fast. Did he unmute us? Oh, they're they're done. Yeah. Are they done? Yes. 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 Okay. I'm gonna nod vigorously. Yeah. <laughs> Can you hear me now, sir? You got three of them in a row, so I lost tr I lost count. Yeah. Oh, wait, wait, are we on the right one? Is... I ratted your ass out so fast. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> Also, thank oh. you, thank you, chat, for at least not spoiling things and, and keeping it. <laughs> I, I took my vague. eyes off the chat. Okay, so was, like, they did a really good job. I'll, the... Yeah, they they were all singing like left or right because I had them up on the okay. screen. But yeah. Okay. Oh man. That was fun. Um, Chris. They're still going, by the way. They are still going. <laughs> no pressure, Chris, but that was a uh, that really got the chat fired up. Oh boy. All right, so yeah. okay. I'm gonna bring in Chris now to choose. You've had the most time of anybody. I have. Look at the secrets. It, but <laughs> All right. Let, uh, so the rest of you, please mute me and Chris. He's been muted. I, I will mute finish. the rest of you. Yeah, yeah. I didn't either. Muted. Like, oh. muted. 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 All right. Uh, let's see. Chris, or yes. sorry, Val Valraven. 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 Uh, you were given the Farseer. And the spy. This is the one where you had a very instant reaction to where it's like, oh, I can't do this one. So now I'm very curious to see. I can't do this one because wisdom was my dump stat. That's that's basically yeah. Raymond had the exact same problem with one of them. I will just say yeah. that. He was like, this, this is, is interesting, like, but this is my dump stat, so I can't. And I was like, oh yeah, crap. <laughs> I just, just mechanically it does like and, and so it's a combination of things. I mean, I was hoping that would the 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 idea story ideas would supersede the mechanics a little bit, but I, I understand. A, a little bit, but also until I get to be like level five, three d six is gonna fucking kill me. <laughs> like, yeah, he, this the, he is a weak ass bard who you know has very little damn little very little life. Yeah, or it's not it's not very little, but um, I might have made that one a little yeah. harsh on the. On the negatives in terms oh, of, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I basically looked at the. I think I looked at dissonant whispers as the yeah. like what I was going to do to people. Yeah, if they fail I mean, it, at level yeah. at level two. I don't know what three d six average is out to be nine damage. Mm. So assuming I fail, and we would have to assume that I'm going to fail these when I do them. <laughs> um, uh, assume failure. Yeah, I mean it's not my dump stat's not terrible. It's a plus zero, but it's just that's just yeah. a, you know of toss the flip of the dice at that point understandable That's three quarters of my life so i probably <laughs> so if not more but anyway i i also although the spy thing makes i think we talked a little bit about, about what i was thinking about from my background but i think yeah. the spy thing also just makes sense story-wise because when we were talking about my my backstory a while back we were saying or i was telling you that um he probably spent like most of his life like lounging about an elven, a fey elven court, just doing, being like a scribe for some elven court, like drinking, having women, just, he spent a whole life and just, just doing nothing. Okay. And for whatever reason, I haven't quite just determined that yet. For whatever reason, he gets inspired to like write the great, the next great story, you know, the next great uh, adventure poem. And to head out on his own and do something with his life. That, maybe that's it. He just hasn't done anything in his life up until that point. So I, I think because you wrote something about the Arcane Brotherhood. Yes. Um, I was like, well, maybe he studied with the Arcane Brotherhood for a little bit, but then found it too stuffy. Because it's like, he doesn't want to like study. He wants to get out there in the world and do things. Okay. So maybe we could reflavor that. And I don't want, so um, as I think about this, I don't want him to be a willing spy. I don't, he's not, he's not, uh, what do you call it? Crafty enough to do that. Okay. He's too like, uh, maybe more like an informant. Maybe? No, I'm, I'm thinking like, like he got in over his head with somebody. Like, uh... he, like, like he owes a debt and he's in trouble. And who are, maybe it's the Arcane Brotherhood. You and I can talk about that. You know, if you got other ideas for who yeah. that is. Okay. But I think Arcane Brotherhood might make sense because maybe he studied with them for a little bit. Or maybe okay. he's in harm because maybe he just, in the in the course of his travels, maybe he just got like a big gambling, like some he's yeah. in over his head with that, somebody. Th so that was the point of like this one. This is a good example of uh, this one in the book was like you are a member of the Harpers, mm. and so I took that and said like, okay, well instead you are just a spy of some sort, and you can be whatever organization you want, whatever circumstances you want, and yeah. all that. So I I took something that was very specific in the book and then opened it up to be a little more vague. And and the idea was so that you guys could fill in the holes. Right. 
So I think the holes for me are it's whoever it's whoever you want it to be. It's it's just he he got in he got in debt of somebody through some means. Got in debt of, of his, somebody of his like uh because he's a very like you know play at loose kind of guy. Like okay. he, he might he might have gotten been naive enough to like get in debt with somebody or or owed some some group a favor that he didn't realize how uh dangerous they were or something like that. Okay. So he's doing this because he has no choice. He's he's spying for them because they're kind of holding it over his head. Okay. Interesting. I think we could work with that. Definitely work um, with that. Um and all but all the mechanical stuff kind of makes sense for his character anyway, already. Yeah. <laughs> Advantage on insight, stealth, and deception. That's great. Maybe maybe I don't I don't know. Yeah. He's just having to do these things to to be a spy for them. Yeah. Um and never rushing without seeing anything from all yeah, that 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 makes sense to me. I think there's a way to include the initiative roll thing in the character sheet because I'm pretty sure with my last character I had advantage on initiative rolls. Oh. And it just automatically just rolled it with advantage. So I think that's something you could just include. Rather than having to just be like, oh, I have to roll twice. I wonder why. <laughs> right. Every time. Yeah. yeah. So I think you can just include the disadvantage in there and then but yeah, it's up to you guys how, you know, a lot of you have these kind of like advantage on certain things. It's like it's up to you how you flavor that or if you just Yeah. You know, if other characters just don't notice. Like, what do you have advantage I feel, on that? I feel, I feel like Valravin is probably also just watching this this fight unfold every time, like yeah. writing things down as he's watching the fight happen and be like, ah, oh, yes, that's very interesting. Yep. And so that may be a little bit of uh, his disadvantage on initiative roles is the just the delay of him him writing the story before he acts on what's happening in front of him. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. I was fully ready. Just I was excited about these, and I was fully ready to go like to ask you if I could do both. But uh, yeah, the, the the other one just and the the, the benefits of that one are really good because yeah. uh, uh, reading all writing and detect magic are really good. The other thing is too though, those abilities are kind of manics. Those were kind of his mm, things too, and I'm like, I already did that already. Like. Yeah. Maybe that was my fault too of like of uh, pinpointing you as like oh you would like this like wait no that's that was Manix <laughs> right um, but out of the five oh, I still yeah. think this would yeah these were the two best for yeah so I think I think yeah definitely the him being a spy I think works works for me cool all right I will add that to and and yeah you and I can talk later or you can just tell me who yeah. who tell me because Val I'll the tell more... you this about what, about Val Robin he he he's probably one of the ones I I left out is probably a little naive. Like he's probably a little too okay. like, eager, so he could be taken advantage of. Yeah. So you can tell me who took advantage of him, <laughs> and and who they, yeah, what 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 group, and what they're what they told him that he has to do yeah. for them. Okay, that's a lot of uh, that's a lot you're putting on me. I was gonna put a lot of these uh, on, yeah. on you. I but... mean, I, I, I can choose if you want, but I thought like story wise, you might have a better idea of yeah uh, what group that makes sense for that to happen with. Yeah, we'll definitely chat about that. I mean, we're going to be doing a lot of these kind of private chats with different players in terms of how this... But you can see why I wanted not everybody to come to here with your backstories already in place because stuff like this could very much flavor, like, how you want to dictate that, your story. Yeah, what's interesting is that I could present my backstory to the group exactly as I already had it written. Yeah. But Robin's just leaving out the part where he, <laughs> yeah. he got indebted to some group and he's being forced to become a spy for them. Yeah. All right, are we ready to come back? I think so. All Does right. Need anything else from me? Sweet. Let's come back. All right. Let's unmute. All right. I've unmuted. Are We're we back. back? Yep. You hear us? Yeah. All right. So four of you now have secrets. That's exciting. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Uh, I'm very excited by all of this. I think I can recall these now. Oh. Um, one fun thing we get to do if you guys are still building your character sheets is we can roll for trinkets. We did that in Tomb. And right, we did. We did. And Icewind Dale, I have to find them, has their own D100 list of trinkets. Oh, dear sweet lord. Yeah. So, for funsies. Uh, everybody can give me a 1d100 to see what random-ass trinket that your character has. Oh, there's only, like, tw like 20 of these. Okay. I thought there was, like, d100. I was like, there's, like, gonna be 100 of them. Yeah, there's a rad. It'd be cool if there was more, but... And... I assume if we're... We're not doubling up if we roll a duplicate. 
That's true. Probably we should re-roll if we end up with a duplicate. Um, can everybody see the uh, the handout I shared? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Ooh, close to a duplicate. Close, but not quite. Wow. All right, so Frey has the piece of sea see? glass shaped like a unicorn's horn. That's kind of cool. <laughs> <laughs> Thimbleweed, small. I remember the one you rolled for two was the nightmare statue. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's like one of those memorable ones. The uh, nightmare statue. A small yeah. iron key with a frayed blue and gold cord tied to it. Mysterious key. Okay. Uh, Edmund. Twenty six. Oh, this is perfect for him. A ripped cloth sail with a symbol you don't recognize. <laughs> Why is it perfect for me? Because don't you like walk around trying to figure out what the weird is? Yeah, this is not that weird. I was just gonna throw it away. <laughs> that is your prerogative for sure. Uh, Varavin, you have an Ulu knife with a scrimshaw handle. I don't know what Ulu means. I don't either. <laughs> I don't know what scrimshaw is. Uh, <laughs> scrimshaw is just like whalebone, right? It's just like bone somebody's whittled down. Oh, Ulu knives. Are those like like they're they're the ones that look like like, like you'd hold them in your fist? It looks like, like a like pizza a, cutter. Yeah, you hold you hold them, and it's like a, like a rounded blade over your fist. Oh, interesting. That's a blue knife. Hmm. And what is a scrimshaw? Let's look like look, look up the word scrimshaw. Yeah, I th isn't it just the like carved bone? Oh yeah, it's carved bone. Yeah, mm -hmm. that one I knew. <laughs> He has to punch somebody with that. He'll punch somebody, but he won't. He, he probably won't. <laughs> probably but yeah, never you, do that. whatever you want to do with this, it's completely up to you. But those are just fun little uh, trinkets that uh, you all can add to our character sheet. Okay. Um, we all. Oh shit! There's a shell trying to come in. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> I need to add your character. So normally, also, if you're watching the stream, I would add your characters to the bot, your names to the bottom. But I just. I haven't gotten around to it yet. <laughs> also, um, if you guys want to, go to the gear icon and change your display name to your character. That's always helpful. Yes, thank you. Do that. Um, otherwise, we also need to go over our house rules, because I did make some ch changes. For example, we're definitely not using Chris's dumbass critical fumbles table. I've... You don't. You don't want to fall on your ass. Are you sure you don't want your like frost wolves or whatever it is in this game to fall uh, on your ass? Not exactly. And let us punch them repeatedly. Um. All right. So can you all see the house rules at the top of the page, at the top of the journal? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes. So I just copy and pasted our house rules, but I highlighted the new things that I added or modified. So those are the only bits I'm going to go over. Hopefully, we just remember everything else. Um, picture of, yeah. character creation Sorry. we already went through um, everybody's got their feats uh, lingering injuries I added the fact that if somebody falls to zero hit points in the same battle or same encounter then they automatically fail the save if they previously succeeded the lingering injury save um, I also added uh, a basically a, a disadvantage on wisdom one which is post traumatic stress for 14 to 17 you have disadvantage on wisdom saving throws so that way, every single attribute, I believe, is represented. <laughs> uh, I didn't realize Wisdom wasn't... I didn't either until I looked through it and changed up the uh, number roll slightly. But yeah. otherwise, Lingering Injuries work uh, pretty much the same, which for those of you that are just joining us, um, yeah, whenever people fall down to zero hit points, they have to make the con saving throw, and if they fail, then they uh, acquire a Lingering Injury, which is must be healed. Did we always start them at level two? Uh, lingering injuries, low, yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I mean, we, we weren't level one for very long, but it was to get yeah. by, like the very, like you know, yeah. there was that one. I think Storm King's Thunder, we fell like three or four times at like a level in one the encounter. Goblins, the goblins, yeah, yeah. you're just not gonna do that. Level ones, come on. Um, yeah. this is an interesting one. So missing players. Um, basically, I'm eliminating the whole the missing players being controlled by somebody else. I'm getting rid of that completely. So what's going to happen is if somebody's not there. They basically their character disappears inside a magical soul stone that cannot be traded, lost, stolen, or destroyed. 
They are protected from harm, but they do not gain the benefits of resting, so their character is just not interactable uh, while they're not there, but they are still carried with the party, if that makes sense. Chris doesn't like this, I can tell. <laughs> that doesn't work, though, does it? What if our two front line aren't here, or what if... No, I mean, like, really, really like, what are we going to do? Like, not go into combat? <laughs> That's what we're going to do. I mean, you're going to have to work around it, but I, I'm getting rid of... I mean, obviously, if we have a lot of players absent, we're going to have to call the session. But if it's just one person can't make it, or maybe if we have something planned, and for some reason we can do it without two, um, this is what's going to happen. I'm, I'm not doing this whole, like, people or other people are controlling each other's sheets anymore. It's driving me... Even if, even if they want to? Even if they want to. It's going to the house rules. Know. I think the first time we have two people missing us is not going to work, but you can try it. It may be. Uh, there may be a case where you might have an NPC with you or something. And keep in mind, you know, obviously I'm controlling things. I can modify the combat if, if you're going to run into combat instantly to say, okay, well, they only they have less players. So obviously you're going to come up with less enemies in the way. So I will balance things accordingly. But I just want to... So you're not going to have snake people ambush us in those in in those uh, <laughs> situations. I really fucking broke you guys with these snake uh, guys. You really I? did. You, that it, our our healer was missing, and you were like, yeah. "Oh, she's pulled under the water." Like, no, she's not. She's yeah. here. We need her. I don't know. You guys would have still survived that battle. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I'm getting rid of uh, anybody controlling each other's character sheets. Any of that is just. Not going to happen. But the character themselves, and instead of trying to hand wave it away, they're just going to disappear inside a soul stone. It's going to be carried around, and they will reappear uh, somewhere else. And yes, that may even happen in the middle of the session, too. That could, they could zip away. You guys will have to so, deal. Okay. I, I, feel, I feel like there's all sorts of mechanical problems with that, but we will deal with those in the game. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. It's a new concept, but I'm, I'm going to play around I, I with it. I think it'll just force us to be creative. I what just, asked, like, I just what if, asked that if we get to that first time that that type of a scenario thing happens and it goes foobar, we leave it open to be able to make changes to that. And it's not a hard line rule because like Fort Barrel Warrior situation where every person was doing a thing that could not be uh, taken away. Like if Gillian had not been here when we came back to that, the next session, what, what happens? Like literally like it doesn't make any sense at that point. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Um, I, I, I think as long as there is room for adjustment, it, it's not a hard and fast rule. It's what you would like to have happen, yeah. Yeah. but you sense, have to be fine, able but to... But I feel like it's not yeah. going to make sense in a lot of situations, but we'll see. I, I think if there has to be room, there has to be wiggle room. Otherwise, it's going to make things a lot weirder. Weirder might not be the best word, it's but gonna like, be like, yeah, it's going to be a little, yeah, very, very hand wavy. Very like, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. There, I mean, there's just no good solution oh, when it comes to this problem. So this was one that I was proposing, which it's, it's kind of the nuclear option at one point, but um, I just never, it just never felt satisfying for me to have to do a run a character by committee. It just drags things down so much and it just ends up being a slog for everybody. Well, so, I don't think we do it character by committee. It's you just give it to one person. That, yeah. That, that person. Works. yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. Character by committee. Yeah. That's just a painful right. situation. We can, but, yeah, we can return to that and, and treat it also as a case by case basis. But um, that's, that would be my preference, but you're right. If something happens where that character is in the middle of like a story thing, when a session ends and they can't make it the next session, then that'll have to be a, a case where you're like, okay, what's going to happen here? Um, we have to complete this role playing scene and that character disappears after that, or how does that work? We don't know, but uh, it's probably going to be a case by case basis. But that isn't the house rule for now, so. Okay. Um, and these are not, yeah, these can always be edited. The only thing is they can't be changed mid session, was the one caveat in there. Um, resting and traveling, uh, copying my basically my rules from Tomb of Annihilation, which is that you do not automatically gain the benefits of a long rest while traveling or resting in non safe areas. Safe areas are towns, cities, and inns, as well as certain areas designated by the DM. Now, keep in mind, this campaign is not a hex crawl. You are not going to leave town and journey for sessions and sessions and never see another town. That is not what this campaign is. Instead, what this does is it allows the DM, similar to what Chris ended up doing, is to include encounters on the way and maybe coming back as part of that overall area and dungeon level and adds to the how do we hit that encounters per day number. And when I say encounter, I don't even necessarily mean combat encounters. It could be like you hit a blizzard and you have to roll you know, a save for that and that's an encounter. But that doesn't make any sense if you can just immediately long rest at the end of the day. So that's the goal there. 
Um, this is another one that obviously it kind of hampers the PCs a little bit, but I think overall it helps balance the game. But with the caveat that this is not Tomb of Annihilation, it is not a hex crawl. <laughs> so it's not going to be that huge slog. Instead, it'll be just, you know, maybe I can include encounter or two on the way to something and then on the way back and you guys will have to deal with the dwindling resources. Um, All right. So we're going to need our magic people to get that freaking hut as fast as I'm human sorry. Possible. I'm sorry. All of Valravan's spells are flavored <laughs> around his speeching. And that is not part of the cards. I'm very sorry. <laughs> it's not coming Speech from is a hut. Well, I mean, you could, like, talk a hut into existence. <laughs> I suppose. I mean, you, you got to talk about your grand library and where you will uh, house all of your books. And... Oh, Lord. Chat, chat wants to control missing players. That seems like a fucking ah, insanity. Yeah. Oh, Jesus. That wasn't, there was, like, chat plays Pokemon things. Everybody literally pressed, like, A and B to, like, move yeah. around and, like, accidentally release good Pokemon. Just yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that would be, I mean, it's a cute idea, but just absolute madness and chaos. Plus, there's, yeah. a, there's like, a 12-second delay between what we're doing right. and what the chat does, right. so it would be real annoying real fast. It would be uh, also somewhat entertaining massive I'll tell you what, I, I'll tell you what yep. it's, instead of tiny hut uh valravan doesn't sleep so valravan will keep watch over you while you sleep oh, he does stupid instead, trance thing yeah instead of uh instead of co conjuring you up it will watch you and less sleep. malaria more frostbite yes um massive damage so this is interesting i mm. i was gonna eliminate massive damage first because it's also something that takes too long it's, it just adds too many steps to combat. It's like, oh, was that massive damage? Okay, I gotta make the save. Now I gotta roll. I gotta keep track of this. But then I thought, okay, what if I tied it to critical hits and instead made critical hits a little cooler by having it be, instead of this, if you deal the half damage thing, say, if you or an enemy deals a critical hit, then the, the target has to make that con saving throw. The DC is 10 or half the total damage, whichever is greater. And failure results in the target suffering from the magic damage ta uh, magic massive damage table. Now keep in mind, what's good for the goose is good for the gander. If an enemy gets a crit, you got to make that con save or suffer the massive damage table. Okay. And I slightly I, I like this. I feel like I feel like just like the critical fumble table, it's gonna fuck you a lot more than it fucks us. But I'm, which, I'm here which for Which is <laughs> well, well. We already had massive damage to deal with in the first place. That's true. So I'm that's actually true. rebalancing yeah. it to affect the players. Yeah, <laughs> if this true. didn't exist, then I would agree. <laughs> but um, before it existed as something that only the players could do to the enemy, now it right. exists as something that, first of all, only triggers on a crit. And if enemies crit you, now you got to make that save. And the results could be massive damage. Now, I, I changed the table a bit to make it a little more simple. Uh, it's still a D10. But if you roll an 8 to 10, the target can't take reactions, which I think is pretty much the same. If you roll a 5 to 7, you can't take reactions, and you're frightened of the attacker until the end of your next turn. Which means I think you have dis whatever the frightened condition is. Disadvantage and stuff. If you roll a 2 to a 4, the target is stunned until the end of the next turn, which is real nasty. So an enemy yeah. could stun you but if you roll bad on the... If you fail your save and roll a 2 to 4, that's a lot of steps. And then if, if you roll a 1, the target is stunned and the attacker gains 1d8 temporary hit points. <laughs> You're so bolstered by his... You could have some <laughs> goblin get a crit and just bolster up with a shield <laughs> as you're stunned. But again, you have to fail a con save and roll the number. So I, I figure that's... It's going to be new, but I think it's going to add... Because so many times we get a crit and it's like, oh, the damage is less than... You know what a normal hit would be. You know the crits can be a little disappointing. That, yeah, crit. You're, you're, yeah, that's that's a very good. I, I like this. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my god, Chris! You should see in the chat. Lumpy wrote that you'll write sonnets about everyone as oh, we sleep. Absolutely. He he will spend all <laughs> night just looking at your facial features and writing down what you all look like. For sure. <laughs> that's not creepy at all. <laughs> um. Notice the uh the fine print that bosses with legendary actions are immune to massive damage because I don't want you fuckers to stun my bosses. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> uh, you mean you don't want your boss characters to fall on their ass like Chris did? Well, I'm not doing critical fumbles at all. I will say that. There is no critical fumbles. <laughs> Wait, so can bosses cause massive damage on us? Uh, yes. They are immune could, to being afflicted could, with massive damage. Could could bosses... Well, yeah, I guess... It, well, but hold on. Bosses with, with legendary resistances... They already have a choose, way to get out yeah, of it. They've already yeah. got a way to get out of it. So they can just choose not to fail the con save. That's true. That's yeah. probably what I meant, actually. The legendary resistance yeah. thing. Yeah. 
Like they would just, they would just, they would always use a legendary resistance to just not fail. That's true. I, I will add that to there. That's a, that's a good one. If anybody has legendary resistance, but do I need it or do you guys? I guess I could add that no, on there. I mean, but it's just, I mean, that's just uh, yeah. I would assume that's just sort of like that's yeah. another one of the saves that they could just, of course. That's use true. Yeah, you, they on. could choose to just pass the save. Yep. That's a good point. Okay, I will make that adjustment. Spell scrolls. This one I'm kind of opening it up in your guys's favor. Um, spell scroll requirements have been changed. Anyone can use a spell scroll as long as they're proficient in either arcana, nature, or religion, depending on which classes normally have access to the spell. So, like, nature would be druid and ranger. <laughs> <laughs> I added some proficient, yeah. Um, but, yeah, so religion for paladin cleric and arcana for all the, uh, yeah. basically everybody else. Um, so you have to be proficient in one of those to cast the spell. If the spell is not one you can normally cast, you then must make a skill check based on that skill with the DC equals 10 plus the spell level. If you fail, the spell still succeeds and the scroll is consumed, but then you must roll on the wild magic surge table. Oh, okay. That's different. So you can still cast this. So it adds some uh, gravity to having proficiency in those skills. Okay. And anybody can cast that spell, but if you fail, you roll the magic, wild magic search, which I think I have to decide. I think it's like a DC, because some of them ask for a DC, whatever your spell casting DC is, and it's possible that person might not have one. Yeah, it, like me. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah, even though you might be proficient in like religion or nature or something. So I think we'll probably use like a DC 13 is like the baseline in the player's handbook. So that opens up spell scrolls a little more just so they actually get used. Yeah. I feel like they just don't get used very much. So maybe that'll make it more fun. And ultimately, it's up to me as a DM to reward you with spell scrolls anyway, so. And spell scrolls appropriate for the group and not just what the book says would be great. I'm just going to put that out there. Well, yes, true, but I also... Oh, it, this is a scroll that only a wizard can read and we have no fucking wizard. Well, that's why this, this, this uh, house rule opens that up. So instead of it being just a wizard spell, it's like anybody proficient in Arcana can literally use that spell. That's the only limiter now. It's not by class or even by spell. It's just by skill. So it's either arcana, nature, or religion, depending on which of those classes. Um, skipping way down here to the next new thing. Uh, flanking has been removed. Fuck flanking. I'm sick of it. It's an advantage to the players for too damn long. Chris modified it slightly, and I removed it entirely. However, I removed and replaced... <laughs> Repeal and replace <laughs> with cinematic advantage. This is the Raymond rule. Cinematic advantage. As part of your movement or attack action or spell that involves an attack roll, you can attempt to gain cinematic advantage by using the environment and making an appropriate skill check. The player describes what they want to do and the DM determines the relevant skill and DC on a scale from 10 to 20. The DM will inform the player what the DC is before they attempt the feat. Cinematic advantage can only be attempted once per turn, regardless of the number of attacks. On a success, the player will perform the feat and gain advantage on their next attack that turn. On a failure, the player will suffer a penalty as determined by the DM, such as landing prone, taking damage, or attacking with disadvantage. Examples include swinging from a chandelier or a rope, climbing crates to gain the high ground, distracting the enemy with broken bottles, or drawing faith from a religious statue. Basically, you're using whatever's in the environment and whatever skill you think uh, you can do that with. And that is a way for you to basically gain advantage on your attack just by doing something cool. I'm hoping it doesn't bog things down too much. It, I'm, I'm, hopefully it'll be kept pretty fast and we can kind of adjudicate fairly quickly. Um, the tricky thing is I, I don't want to make it an automatic, like, it's always good or it's always nothing. It, it needs to be in, it's a risk-reward. So if you do it, you roll the skill and then you're gaining advantage or something bad happens. So it is a tactical decision you have to make. Yeah. And probably the easiest one is you either get advantage or disadvantage, but sometimes it might be interesting, like you fall on your ass or, you know, right. something could happen, it but is. it's going to be yeah. a pure, like, case-by-case, -case, you know, basis, depending on what the environment is and what's going on there, so just to add a little bit of roleplay flavor, flavor, but also have it be mechanically, you know, advantageous to the player. Ironically, now we don't have any rogues that would really like this feature, <laughs> but still, <laughs> some of yeah. you would probably be looking for advantage on your attacks. I'm sure there'll be opportunities to, for it to be used. <laughs> yeah. So I wanted to bake that into the rule. Um, this other rule is going to be the Heather rule for her character, which is the fastball special. I stole... There's nobody to throw me! 
Uh, Rochelle can throw you. She hasn't here to introduce her character, but her half orc oh, is massive. Oh, hell yeah! <laughs> so I stole this from Feats Don't Fail Me Now, which is one of my uh, products I reviewed uh, earlier this year. Uh, this is not a feat, though. This is just baked, baked into our rules. As an action, you can throw one willing creature that is at least one size smaller than you. You throw the creature, the fast ball, up to a distance in feet equal to twice your strength score. This movement doesn't provoke opportunity attacks. As a reaction, the fast ball can make one melee attack against a creature within its reach during or after this movement. On a hit, the attack deals an extra 1d6 bludgeoning damage. At the end of the movement, the fastball must succeed on an acrobatics check, DC 10 plus the number of 5 foot increments thrown, or fall prone. If the saving throw fails by 5 or more, the fastball also takes 1d6 bludgeoning damage. As they go crashing to the ground. Or the... Yeah, so I wanted to include a whole because I I know that she was immediately started talking about like toss me, toss me, <laughs> and I was like, all right, I need a rule for this because I know it's gonna happen the very first session. This is gonna come up, and I have to come up with a rule, and that's gonna uh, be the fucking rule. So I'm like, let me just talk about like how would we adjudicate me being an improvised weapon? Yeah, that's <laughs> basically. Right. That's right. But this like, is this how is, is that gonna work? This is gonna be the rule. So that's that's how it's gonna work. That, that's awesome. I assume you're going to keep track of all this because as I'm reading it, I'm like, I, I'm backing away from the. I'm hoping it's not too. Yeah. I mean, once you figure out your whoever's throwing, going to be the main person throwing you, can double their strength to determine the distance and feet. And so then. Rochelle is large. Hold on. I well, think I'm wrong. Heather's character is. <laughs> Heather's character is small. And yeah, all of no. you are. Well, except for Reese. Reese can't throw, but. He can be <laughs> Reese and uh, Heather can be thrown by you Reese normal size folks. Yeah, mm. I'm I'm very small. I'm only three feet tall. Gotcha, yeah. gotcha. Right. So okay. You can be the the fast balls. <laughs> 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 so that is the fast ball special rule. I threw that in there. Nice. And then finally, if you scroll all the way to the bottom, I wanted to adjust our MVPC poll because. I want to reward inspiration more often throughout the session and not feel like oh, that's... Oh, thank God. That, I, I will say that that is a genuine problem. I was, gonna, I was, I was actually going to talk to you about this a while back. Really? I felt like I could never give inspiration because the MVP PC was, poll was coming up. So I, was yeah. like, well, I can't give inspiration for that because... Yeah, I'm, it, I'm glad you brought this up. Yes. It, 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 it's a neat idea, but um, I, yeah, I want to be able to reward inspiration in the moment. Like, mm -hmm. after you guys do something cool or funny or good role-playing or something, I want to give inspiration right then and there. Um, yeah. But I want to keep the poll because I think that's a cool way to interact for the for the viewers to interact with the channel and, and you know, reward whoever they thought was their favorite player that session for whatever reason. So instead, I'm making a kind of a treasure loot table. So whoever wins the MVPC poll gets to roll a 1d20, which, by the way, this is included in a table, so you don't have to literally roll a 1d20. I guess you could, but there's a table you can click on. Excuse me, that will roll these things. Um, it's a 50% chance to get a potion of healing. Oh. Yeah, everybody's buddy. <laughs> yeah, that's always good. Um, the other 50% is either gaining a, a gemstone worth 10 GP, which you can, I'll need to insert a table for that. Gain a first level spell scroll, which is relevant to our spell rule, so you could get spell scrolls a bit more often. How do you determine what? I'll have to. I'll have to put a table uh, okay. for. Uh, you, you'll randomly roll for the spell scroll. Gotcha. Um, grant another player of your choice inspiration. A chance for players to give each other inspiration. Okay. You roll an eighteen, nineteen, and if you roll a twenty, you can roll twice more and take both prizes, but you ignore subsequent twenties. There's no wishing for more wishes. <laughs> infinite wishes <laughs> infinite wishes so what do you guys think about it? is that does that sound like a cool yeah i like it i like Reward? it, I like it. Mm -hmm. I like, yeah. oh yeah. i still it, get to it, start with inspiration right because i got it at you got the, at the end of, of the yeah <laughs> that's fair you got at the end of our last campaign yeah you at the grandfathered in yeah grandfathered into this you feel uh like it's a legacy from uh, you feel another character <laughs> No, yeah, it's really good. And uh, like I said, it's, it, it solves a problem that I was legitimately having yeah. in the last campaign. I agree. Yeah. Um, so we still want to run the MVP. We obviously won't have one tonight for our session zero, but starting at session one, uh, we'll be running an MVPC poll uh, near the end of each session, and viewers will be able to vote for who their favorite player was with whatever criteria you want to use, if the player made you laugh or you thought they had the best role-playing moment or just a cool combat encounter or whatever reason, and then the winner of that will be able to roll uh, basically on their own little mini loop table. And I may look at, like, 
uh, scaling it later in the campaign. Like, it's now a greater potion of healing or something. I'll kind of play that by ear and determine uh, what would be a good mark for that <laughs> for your reward table to suddenly be uh, leveled up. But that is the idea behind that. So those are all the new house rules. I think only one of them got a lot of uh, pushback, which is understandable because you guys had good comments on it. Um, how goes the character? Are we, are we finished with our character creation? Did all of you guys, did you get to, no? Okay, we can keep going on that. Let's keep going. Um, we want to make sure we got our characters ready. Uh, have we at least gotten to level one yet? <laughs> I, I'm still editing my background, but that's, just, that's where I'm at. Okay. I'm debating about changing my background. Interesting. I feel, I feel like none of, none of us really put much thought into backgrounds until we sat down here tonight. So now yeah. like all of a sudden it's like, ah, like, backgrounds are such a weird thing because I feel yeah. like that's what the player secrets should have ended up being, which is they give you some kind of more mechanical feature that you can yeah. use. Uh, instead, it's mostly just kind of flavor text. 60 people watching the stream right now. Holy moly. Oh boy. That is a welcome 60 people. That is an absolute record for the stream and the channel. Really cool. We're just making our characters. There's not really much going on. <laughs> no, this, is, this has been very fun. Gosh damn secrets. Oh my god. <laughs> secrets. Um, let's see. I think, did everybody talk about what their feats are? Reese, did you talk about your feet? Uh, did we already go over yours? Yeah, it's it's the piercing people. Piercer, Piercer that's right. Okay. Bugs. Yeah. Um, what does everybody's stats look like, I guess, in terms of what you're... I don't know how much I should be talking and letting you guys do your thing, but I don't... I can tell you at this point, I've locked them in. Yeah, I'm curious to see where the spreads I'm pretty are. pretty happy with mine. So many of you are dumping charisma, it's fucking hilarious. Because <laughs> they, yeah. they know they know they gotta <laughs> pick up that slack. My goodness. <laughs> um... I can tell you what my yeah, I can tell you what mine are, and then mine are basically just uh, actually I I I think I rolled pretty well. I think I was the only one who did roll average. Uh, did you take the standard have... array or did you not? No, I didn't. Okay. Yeah, I think everybody else did. Yeah, I think I was the only one to get over it as uh, on the rolls. That's right. You did like what seventy five or something. So, yeah. Like, everybody else was over. in the sixties. Yeah. Um. Valravin will have a nine strength, so it's a negative one. Huh. A fourteen. You're not you're not throwing anybody with a fastball special. No, I'm not throwing anybody. <laughs> his, 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 his arms are already occupied. Yeah. Uh fourteen strength or fourteen dexterity. Fourteen constitution, which I think is pretty good for a bard. Yeah. Fourteen intelligence. Ten wisdom and eighteen charisma. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, it's all in that crisp. That's pretty. That's a lot of fourteens, though. That's pretty solid. It is. Yeah, he's gonna. In terms of skill proficiencies, he's actually the one that I feel like, like thematically makes sense. Is history. He's he's proficient in history. Mm. He should he should know stories about wherever they are. Hopefully, we'll see. Yeah. But uh, that that's why I was like I could I couldn't make the intelligence by dump stack because I needed that to be a little higher. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you're actually filling out your traits and ideals and bonds and all that. Yeah. Well, I just I, those actually may not end up being locked. You, you probably just pick those. I, if you use the character I, monster, it's just whatever yeah, they have in the player's handbook. The yeah. Can we? If once we go through this process, good. can we change Give it afterwards? Reason. Oh yeah. Oh wait, no. I I muted you. Okay. What? <laughs> I guess I never unmuted you. Yeah. You can go in and flick the gear and just pick whatever you want for that. Because yeah, I think the character monster just makes you pick one of the ones that are set up there. Okay. But like for all the ideals and stuff i can just sort of oh yeah click that real fast and change yep, it later for sure yeah you can enter in whatever you want <laughs> character monsters gives you a good starting point what kind of weapons is your character using chris weapons <laughs> are you actually gonna fight <laughs> <laughs> not really like not he's really? just gonna talk he's, his way out of all the situations he's he's got i got 18 charisma got... i don't fight everybody likes yeah, me I don't fight <laughs> uh, he's got his primary. If he's got nothing else in in the tank, vicious mockery is going to be his like go to attack. <laughs> Raymond loved that spell when he plays his part. I remember yeah. it never like you, you did such a good job, and everybody always made the save. Right. Yeah. Hopefully, my Christmas makes means no one makes the save. But uh, yeah, it, it, 
he has a light crossbow if he absolutely it, it, the light crossbow <laughs> is for if we're fighting like golem someone that literally cannot be vicious mockery uh. then he will resort to physical violence but until then it's all either it's your wit and riparte that's right exactly does your pin become like a dagger or something like that? It's sharp <laughs> enough that it's a dagger. He just stabs me with it. No, go away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, in, in terms of just like like basic attacking, vicious mockery is his basic attack. Okay. He, he won't be doing much. Uh, yeah. More uh, what about spells? You know spells yet? I do. Okay. Um, he has as cantrips. Sorry, I'm clicking through your sheet. I, I, that probably switches uh, it for you too. <laughs> oh, no, I, I, well, maybe we did it at the same time. Um, he has a cantrips, vicious mockery, and prestidigitation. Bards oddly don't get that many cantrips. They only get two until like level four. Mm. Um, but his level one spells are dissonant whispers, which is a saber suck. No, no, it's I think it's a fear spell, right? Yeah, maybe we'll run away. I like from that me. one. Yeah. Yeah. Um, heroism, which that's that's a really good one for him. He just talks at all of his oh party members up, and they get temporary hit points. Um, Tasha's hideous laughter, which is just a really good bard spell. Yeah, uh, to save her suck. Um, they fall down laughing. And which is you cracking word. a joke, I assume. So you better write some jokes down <laughs> at their expense for yeah. sure. Yeah. And then healing word, which is just a, you know the the like everybody should weak, take that yeah. raise you from the dead the healing spell yeah. And then as part of being fey touched, he has a once per long rest misty step and a once per long rest command, ah, which will also be flavored as him him like reading a passage. He, he'll be he'll be like reading a passage of of what he's writing, describing what that character's about to do. Until he gets like the last word, and the last word will be the command that he's giving them. Okay. Nice. All right, and you're still at level one right now, or did you get to level two? Uh, I'm just still level one. Okay. Uh, I'm not leveled up yet. That's perfect. Let's go to uh, Heather's character. How's the character sheet looking? I made it to level two. Okay, you're ahead of the game. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god, it's... your hit points. Your hit points! Oh no! <laughs> but, but do you think the Barbarian's going to win the hit point game? Because uh, I don't know. <laughs> we haven't seen a barb yet, and it's pretty mighty. It's the only one with a d12, right? Yeah. Yeah. Although she only, yeah. has, a, only has a plus two con, so... Mm. For now. Or, yeah, I was going to say, that's a that's definitely one to expand. Oh, yeah. Con and strength, they're going to go boop, 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 boop. <laughs> My intelligence is a minus one right now, by the way. Just so you guys yeah. know. Yeah. Yep. That's right. <laughs> Easy barbarian dump stat right there. Yep. Uh. All right. So what are we going over? Sorry, I had to uh, do just baby whatever, pacifier. whatever. Yeah, whatever you want to go over in terms of what your sheet looks like, what your abilities are, what your weapons are, all that kind of stuff. Maybe so, what, your, what your skill specialties are. Just so um, the other party knows. Okay. Um. So my weapons are going to be a battle axe, so which I will be using two-handed to get that higher damage roll. Um, she's a meat shield, but she's a meat shield who hits hard. Mm-hmm. Um, Seventeen strength. Yeah. Battle axe is going to be as big as you are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Basically. But your barbarian um, might have the second highest charisma too. <laughs> I just looked at your <laughs> charisma score. <laughs> That's hilarious. Yeah, I have a twelve in charisma. Yep. Yeah. Um, I got. I have. A, I, well, I have a proficiency in an intimidation. I gotta be. Oh, that's, yeah. yeah, that's good. So, um, uh, so my proficiencies are uh, athletics. Um, surprisingly, deception. I'm not real sure how. Oh, it's my uh my background is deception. Mm. Uh, acrobatics comes from my feet that I took, and then Intimidation is part of my barbarianness. And then Saving Throws, I have my wonderful Strength and Con proficiency there. Um, I don't know why I have a Javelin on here. I don't have Javelins. It's probably five times as big as I am. <laughs> Some of the stuff, when you make the character, it might, might give you... I think, yeah, I think it just auto-gives everyone a Javelin for yeah. a, a range weapon. <laughs> when you graduate from Adventurers University, here are your five javelins. <laughs> so, 
the, the crazy thing with mine is I'm not only nimble, which means I can move into any character space that is of a level hot, the larger than me. So mm. I'm small. So in y'all's medium characters, I can move through you with no problem. Ah, I just yeah. walk through just your legs. Run, yeah. That that could come in handy for yeah. tight spaces for sure. Yeah. And then I took squat nimbleness, which gives me additional nimbleness, <laughs> um, like the extra five feet of movement, all that fun mess. Um, did did it, you already bake the? Watching, uh, uh, sorry, did you already bake the strength index score into the improvement? Yes. Okay. Yeah. I don't know if it adds in it or not. Uh, yeah, no, I did. It's strength or dex, and I chose for this one. I chose dex. Gotcha. To to up that. Um, I'm really debating about that though, because I chose dex because my armor class is based off of dex and con. Yeah, that was my other question. Are you doing the unarmored defense? Yes. Okay. Mm. Right now I am. Unless I find some like really good tiny armor. <laughs> uh, armor. Yeah. Um, but it the, the the attacking whenever she goes into her rage will be quite entertaining. Um, one of the things that you guys will figure out throughout the the campaign is going to be this character is very much a play on dichotomies, hence the halfling barbarian, the the little tiny thing that you would never suspect to be a barbarian is a barbarian. Yeah. Um. And probably, and Chris and I were talking about this earlier, but uh, the the way and manner that she speaks, because she's based off of a wildling, a Game of Thrones wildling, um, which they're very gruff and things like that. But because of that, the way she speaks is going to be very proper. It's going to be really like where you would expect someone to just like start screaming like like crazy things and wanting to like bang on their chest and start fighting type of thing, she's going to end up going, well, I guess it's time for everyone to go and meet their makers. And I guess we shall battle now. <laughs> and it, it's, it's just going to be. Does she still sound like that when thing. she's in a rage? Yes. Which okay. is what's going to make it even funnier because you'll know that she's raging because she will just start laughing. That That is her rage is when she just starts laughing because she will Joyously enjoy killing other people. That seems terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> it's just has an absolute has a... fit over there. He's trying to figure out how he's going to write that down in his book. I was trying to say something. I guess I didn't realize I, had, I was drinking whiskey at the same time. <laughs> Choke on your words, sir. My damn. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Jesus. I'm guessing your speed is not five. That must have been a. Hey, uh, no, it's supposed to be 30 now. 30, okay. That I is better than it. 5. Uh, by the way, you're, uh, do you want to announce how many, how many hit, hit points you have as a level 2 Barbarian? Uh, as a level 2 Barbarian, I currently have 23 hit points. That, yep, that tracks. That tracks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's going to be nuts. Yeah. Hard. I'm excited. So We've if, not seen a Barbarian. If you look the chat, you'll see me roll for the level 2 hit points. Yeah, I do see that, yeah. Oh, right. We kind of skipped that, didn't we? We skipped our hit point thing. Well, I guess I'm not used to it because level one, you always take the max. So I guess, yeah, level yeah. two, you're yeah. right. Yeah, you should be rolling. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I just did, how did, your, how did your roll go? Uh, I rolled really poorly, so I took the average. Gotcha. You, you didn't roll really poorly. You rolled a one. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Chris was paying poorly. attention. <laughs> I rolled really poorly. <laughs> the most poorly, in fact. Yes. Uh, what is the average? Is that seven, seven. for a freaking barbarian? Okay. Mm -hmm. Plus your modifier. So yeah. it added nine. Gotcha. Total. Yep. Yeah. So. You're pretty good. But yeah, I'm excited. We've never. So for those of you watching, uh, we've we've been playing D and D for five plus years, and we have never seen a barbarian before in a full campaign. The only class until Artificer came out. The only class that we had not seen a full campaign played of. I think we played like one one shot with a barbarian one time, which barely counts. So I'm very excited to see that. And then obviously I'm very excited to see Raymond's character because they only just added Artificer last year. So that's obviously also completely new. Um I'm about to roll for my HP because I'm doing level two right now. Okay, let's let's see Chris's roll for HP. So let's see. Scroll down. 
I hey, look, I you rolled barely better than I did. <laughs> <laughs> I will take my average. Thank you very take much. Take your average. Uh... Is there a button for that? Yeah, uh, on the character master. Yeah, there's an average. There's a roll button, and right next to it, there's an average button. Wait. Do you know how to get back you... into the character monster when you level up? No. So uh, you go into the little gear icon, and down strange. at the bottom, it says launch level plus character mancer. Uh, don't you. do the launch level one character mancer one. That <laughs> completely resets your sheet. You don't want that one. Yeah. You want the other one. And then um, it'll just do all the things for you. You don't have to like input everything yourself. It just does it all for you. Nice. Uh, speaking of Raymond, let's look at your character now that it's coming together. How are your stats looking? Wait, how many hit points does Chris have? Mr. Artificer. Oh. Yeah, what's your total? Level 2. Step back, I'm not done with it yet. My total is 17. Which is hey. not bad. Yeah. I don't, Bard, think, I don't think that's bad for Bard's her. Bard's D10, and I think you've got yeah. probably this, a similar con modifier as yeah. Tether's character, so... It's not bad at all. Okay, so I finished my character. And then God, none I of you have a good AC. I'll say that. <laughs> <laughs> yep. To be I, get I, have 14. I, I would not consider a fourteen good AC. <laughs> not for a I would for line. a level two. I, the thing is, when you rage, you get that resistance, which is going to be very nice. So I hit roll. Mm -hmm. okay. Probably take that roll. You got yeah. slightly yeah. better than average. Yeah. Average yeah. So if you keep that roll, you just leave it there, and then it'll add your con modifier in for you. You don't have to do any of that. Yep. Hit next. And then, oh, I gotta infuse items. Okay. Oh, you gotta I pick gotta all that. I put you on the spot now. <laughs> well, I don't. Well, my hit points are up to eighteen. And then, uh, wow. What what D, D? Oh, you have a D eight as artificer. I have a D eight and with a con modifier of two. Okay. So I start off with ten, and then now plus eight, so eighteen. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so my guy's supposed to be really intelligent. So I put my. Uh, and the nice thing about human is I get a plus one to everything. Mm. Yes. So everything was a plus one from my standard array. And a lot of you needed that plus one to everything. The way you just roll. Yeah. <laughs> yeah right. Um, I put my plus two that you gave us to intelligence and my plus one into a uh, con. Well, hang on. You get what? You don't get the plus two plus one if you're if you get the plus one on everything. Oh, you don't? No, sir. <laughs> That's too much. Um, so the hu the human gives you plus one on everything instead of getting a plus two to something and a plus one to something. Else, unless I'm wrong. And then. That's the unique thing that humans get, whereas every other race, you get a plus two to one stat and a plus one to something else. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Uh, I think you're giving yourself too many stat bonuses there. So either you can take your, your regular human one, which is to get a plus one to everything, or you can use the Tasha's variant rule, which is mm -hmm. any race can do a plus two to something and a plus one to something else. Got you. So well, there's also choice. human variants that you can do as well too. Well, we we that don't give you a plus one to everything. We eliminated the human variant because everybody's getting a feat, and that's the one thing human variant gives you is the feat. No, in the in five E tools, they have human mark of finding, human mark of handling type of things. Oh, I don't know what those are. Uh, wait, those never mind. Those are Eberron. Sorry. Oh, uh, okay. My bad. Can I go back and choose my infusions later if I? Keep going through my character mantis. Sure, yeah. As long as you, as long as you have everything set up by session one, basically. But I, I would like to know as much as I can about your character uh, now. Well, I, I need, I need to go back and fix that then. I, I okay. Two of the one. Lower your stats a little bit there, Chief. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, well, it's up to you. You, you would either have to subtract the one from the ones you didn't put the two in the one, or I mean, you probably know what the math is now, or take off. The extra yeah. two and the one. You, you you don't get both of those. You get either or. Got you. You can okay. always change them too, uh, Raymond. Once you hit save and apply changes, you can make changes to what your scores are for strength and all that, yeah. without having to go back through the character mancer. Okay, I'll do that. Um, but anyway, I'm gonna put it all like towards intelligence, and then um, he's a little bit of a fighter. I mean, he has quick escapes and all that. So, um, so he's a little a little beefy, but he's not that strong. 
Uh, you want to know my spells? Um, yeah, what, what saves do artificers have, too? I just don't know anything about artificers. No, new to saves. all of us. What do you mean by saves? Your proficient saves. You should have two. Oh, uh, con and intelligence. Okay, con's a good one and to then, have. And then I chose to be proficient in um, investigation and perception, I think. Okay. Um, and then being a soldier background gave me proficiency in athletics and intimidation. Ah. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, spells would be so very helpful if you know those. My guy's all about, like, transforming things with his alchemy. So for my cantrips, I have to go from memory. I picked uh, Magic Stone. So I can turn... Um, I guess turn little stones into like little explosive pellets, I guess. Okay. Um, and then I picked, um, what is it called? Sword dance, I think? Uh, sword burst is what I'm reading. Oh, you're looking at it? Yeah. Yeah, sword burst. So I can pretty much like just, I don't have to be swords, but the ground around me just turns into like blades, um, mm. possibly causing damage to everyone around me. So kind of like a little shield protection. Okay. Or not a shield. Yeah, it sounds like you're gonna have a lot of reflavoring of spells, which I'm excited <laughs> for. I think that's a cool idea. So yeah, it causes blades around me. And then Artificer gets I only have two level one spell slots, but you get spells equal to your intelligence modifier plus half your level rounded down. Minimum one. So I have five spells to choose, but only um two spell slots to level one. Yep. And uh two spell slots to level two. But similarly, the spells I've chosen are, um, I guess you could read it, Fairy Fire. So I'm imagining I'm, I'm changing something about the enemy that they start lighting up a little bit. Yep. Uh, feather Fall, change our clothes so we fall lighter. Ah. Grease, change the ground, the ground yeah. texture so it's more greasy. Um, Tasha's Caustic Brew, that was a cool one. It's supposed to, like, Make a line of acid, but I was thinking about um, turning people's sweat into acid. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Transforming the, the moisture in their skin into acid that they have to like try to scrape off. Uh, and what was the last? Oh, absorb elements. Um, that's a reaction, but basically just changing, I don't know, the, the outside of my skin to absorb the element or something like that. So you guys all like that transmuting the things yeah, around I you. To, okay. I tried to pick spells that were related to that. So it's not like yeah. we're like shoot a fireball. Yeah. Like bonfire was a close one where I could turn or bonfire where I could make fire, you know, appear. But yeah, I wanted something like, like transforming something into something else. Yeah. And not some weird, like lightning whip or something, which was on the list. I knew you do a fucking great job with this. <laughs> this is all amazing. Uh, I haven't looked at infused items yet, so that's next down the level as a level two. Um, but I guess for the uh, people watching, as an artificer, you there's like a list at the end of the uh, section, so I can um, do things like make a weapon like magic, make it plus one bonus to attack. Um, it's all by level, so there's some things here that I can't access yet. Right. Yeah, so you actually hit kind of your big class feature at level 2, which is the infuse item thing. Mm -hmm. Wow, yeah, you can, you know, four infusions, and you can infuse two items. So, Raymond's character can basically make magic items. Mm -hmm. With certain, like, caveats, obviously, but... Right. Right. Yeah, that's, that's I'd be interested to see how that goes. Yeah, I, I, yeah. yeah. I think we talked about this before, but like after every long rest, like there's gonna be a lot of things happening where, right. where Raymond's character is making all these items, and you're uh, like chatting it up and doing song of rest and all that. Right. Yes, exactly. <laughs> That's artificer level two. Cool. Reading about infusing item now. <laughs> that sounds fascinating. Of holding, yeah, I can just make magic items, some that we've seen in the past. Yeah, that's really neat. So, we, we've got two new classes that we've never seen before in a DD campaign Barbarian and Artificer. And then I'm, I assume everybody's playing new sub, like brand new subclasses, at least. Uh, I don't know what Rochelle's is yet, but uh, 
Reese and Chris's characters, I think, are both from Tasha's. I think so. Eloquence Bard, which we're not there yet. We'll get there at third level. And uh, Swarmkeeper Ranger. Mine will be from Tasha's. Yours is from Tasha's as well. You plan? Uh, did we announce that? Which one you're doing yet? No. Do you want to announce it or do you want to keep it? No. Okay. I was, ma- I was making sure I didn't want to announce it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's that's later. That's a tease. Yeah. Yep, yeah. Yeah. We're not there yet. We're not, we're not at level yeah. three yet. Yeah. We did kind of spoil Reese's with the picture. <laughs> that one was like ingrained right. in his picture. It's like, all right, this is what you are. Uh, and I think Raymond mentioned his earlier. Obviously, his is all new because it's Artificer. Uh, Chad is asking for the spoilers already. No, chat. Um, what else? I think that was. Yeah, we went over... Everybody's getting their character sheets together. I assume now we're getting up to level 2. Uh, we've done our trinkets, which you all can include on your character sheets if you want to include your trinkets that you got. Um, I we've... basically just replaced my, my, my dagger with that with Ulu knife. With the Ulu knife with the scrimshaw handle. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, now that you know your secrets, you can start formulating plans in terms of how you're going to use that stuff with your... Uh, character story you can bake that right into your story if you want or just include it as kind of an an afterthought and maybe you've got just entirely different story um, the best way to discuss that if you want to discuss something with the party do it in that discord channel that we've got the players only and obviously if it's secret late related then that's just me directly uh, and that's how we're gonna have to discuss it there because that stuff is all hidden information uh, we ran over our house rule changes and additions uh, so we've covered all the new stuff. Everything else is there to see. Um, I think we've done everything. I was going to go over Reese's character the same way I just did, but he's stepping away. I've been delaying this whole time, but I'm not sure if he's coming back or not. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I guess we'll just plan on making Rochelle's character at some point between now and session one, because I don't want to do that in session one. Um, I think that be a little we, we can hopefully review her character after it's set up and introduce it and give everybody kind of a brief recap of uh who everybody's character is because a lot of people who are watching may be uh starting with session although i've been very impressed with all of you that are watching um the session zero right now that's been incredible uh can you show chat the two secrets that we will get to pick from uh yes i can show you those if you're watching the chat as a player, please don't look. <laughs> yeah, so the ones... It is very disappointing that we did not, because these are some of my favorite secrets. Uh, it's that one, and this one are the ones that uh, her character will gain access to. But we'll plan on setting her up uh, at some point, having the character built uh, between now and session one, and then uh, for session one, we can... Uh, informally introduce her character and then we'll kind of bake in the different mm, bacon uh Mm -hmm. ways in which your characters meet and the connections that you have oh yeah and the situations you're in no i didn't if if you guys have ideas between each other um if you think like oh man maybe i met your character then we can certainly talk about that um otherwise i don't i don't don't know what anybody else's background is right yeah and I kind of left that as an empty thing right now because of the secrets, because that could be a, um, you know, something that could affect everybody's situation. Uh, I will say this. Varavan will have arrived in the north looking for adventurers. Specifically because of this crisis. He, he will be looking for adventurers um, because he's, he's only here in the north because there's this crisis going on. And he assumes that there's an adventure to be had in any sort of, you know, terrible crisis. Yeah. How do so, we know? How do we know Valavin didn't cause this crisis? <laughs> no. The distrust no. immediately yeah. begins. <laughs> That'd be <laughs> awesome. If one of the secrets was like, "You're responsible for the entire main story." <laughs> you're the big bad. <laughs> you're the you're the big bad villain. Congratulations. It's 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 the playing like Dead of Winter, and you're the betrayer. <laughs> You've yeah. been given the betrayer card. That, that would be interesting. <laughs> That'd be insane. Oh no! You are Arl the Frost <laughs> Maiden. Right. Chris, you're acting a little <laughs> sus. <Yeah. laughs> Vote him out of the party, just in case. Inject. 
Uh, but yes, those connections uh, will be important. The big thing is, I, I did want some of you to be from uh, the region to have those connections, um, but not everybody. Do we know, do we know I'm who Reese is yet? Okay. I think, yeah, Heather mentioned she's, and I think Reese is specifically from the Reged tribes as well. Okay. I'm from one of the towns. Yeah, okay. and specifically I think uh, Raymond and, and your characters are not, and then Rochelle's, I'm not sure if, if I can put that one uh, in Icewind Dale or not. Be malleable, but even those of you that are from Icewind Dale, I wanted to flavor it that you might have left for whatever reason, but then uh, came back because of this crisis because you did become level two. So you you've done some adventuring, which is kind of how you might have acquired some of these secrets too. Whatever you did during your initial little excursion to get to level one, uh, now you are level two starting out. Uh, also, the plans, I, th I think I mentioned this before, but uh, normally these 5e campaigns, they run from like 1 to 12 or 1 to 11, and usually it's like you get to 11 or 12 right at the end. I, I will go ahead and say that I'm expanding, I know I mentioned this before, I'm expanding this campaign to later levels. We're not going all the way to 20, we're not doing that, and we just did that with a campaign. Um, but I would like everybody to, to plan out your characters as if you were going to reach maybe around 14 or 15. Uh, so solidly into like the end of tier three rather than 11 or 12. So we'll be expanding the uh, level scope uh, for those of you that are obviously familiar with this campaign. And it, and I'll just go ahead and say it, it was designed originally as one of those, the same thing they always do, which is like one through 11. And I'm like, you know what? I want those players to reach those cool tier three abilities and, uh, you know, just be able to up the pacing a little bit. So, and those of you watching the crafting streams, that's a big part of what I'll be planning is uh, how to make all those various changes and modifications. Um, any questions for session zero? For those of you that remain. <laughs> I, I mean, yes, but not, I suspect we'll have to talk about stuff after, after we're all done here. Yes, so obviously, yeah. yeah, I've set up, I want to use Discord for all of our communication. Um, for the, we, I've got a players only channel set up that's going to be all the communication going going forward if i have to make any announcements or anything that's going to be done through discord um and if we ever talk use that discord channel but if it's something secret related then whisper me directly and that's the best way we can communicate from there um i think that's going to put an end to our session zero then uh yeah. Thank you to Chris, Heather, uh, Rochelle, Raymond, and Reese for playing. Thank you to all of our wonder... Reese, you came back. <laughs> I, I was going to say that I got to go. The baby's not cooperating at all. Tonight. Yeah, that's fine. We're, we're wrapping things right. up now. <laughs> um, yes, thank you to all the awesome patrons. Uh, Shoutouts to Platinum Patrons, Joe, Will, Time Dancer, Manuel, Wizard, Princess, Christopher, Star, Lovely, Thomas, Ian, Captain Mike, Jeremy, Adam, Leroy, Goblin Works, and Aiden, and Gold Patrons, RPG, Paper Crafts, Charming Grenade, Pretty Boy, Numa, Marco, Stade, Vicente, Gilberto, Dead Lizard, Lounge, Sam, Ross, Limpy, Spuds, Drone, Fatboy, 619, Sclaney, Nick, Farney, McButterpants, Blood Angel, Veronis, The Fireworks Factory, Baboon, Boon, Sean, AK, Cert, 2B, and Nathan. Thank you all very much for your support. We are live streaming our D&D &D adventures every week, and we will see you next week for session one. All these wonderful characters. Yeah. It's so like happy. I feel like we should be riding horses. Yeah. Yeah. I like my brass. <laughs>